Columbus and football together like stars and stripes. I said football is bigger in the Lone Star State. The history, the legends, the titles. In 2021, a group of Roadrunners ripped off 11 straight wins, capturing the spotlight and put San Antonio on the college football map. It's low, he picks it up. He's going to throw a pass into the end zone. Caught! Goodness catches it to the 50, to the 40. Sincere McCormick's going to take it to the house. Ball game over. That's a Roadrunner winner. Seven win season, a division title. What's left? How about a championship showdown with Conference USA's hottest team? And deep in the heart, Western Kentucky steps into the Alamo Dome with an electric offense. The boys from Bowling Green are on a seven-win run, and they've got the best quarterback you've never heard of, Bailey Zappi. Their third conference title is on their fingertips. Zappi, wide open, and is Sturge racing past the secondary. Zappi throwing deep ball, Davis! Western Kentucky. Teams, one dream. Western Kentucky. TSA. Prince USA Championship. Into the Alamo Dome we come. And here are the Hilltoppers. East Division champs. Western Kentucky has won seven straight to get here. CBS Sports Network presents the Ryan Conference USA Football Championship. Western Kentucky, UTSA. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz, along with Aaron Taylor. Jenny Dell joins us shortly. This is a great weekend in college football and a great crowd behind us. This is championship weekend and you've been here. Two time All-American at Notre Dame, Super Bowl champ and now a college football Hall of Famer. You've been here. I have been here and there's nothing like it Rich. Tonight is about opportunity. It's an opportunity for one of these teams to create a lifetime of memories for the loser. However this will be a night they'll want to forget 130 teams started this season with this very goal to win their conference championship. Well UTSA and Western Kentucky have that chance tonight and I can't wait. Obviously this is the biggest game of the year in conference USA the best game of the year in Conference USA. These two teams, this is a rematch. And so rare to be able to have a chance at redemption. Bailey Zappi throwing the interception late in the previous game. An instant classic. I expect both of these teams, Rich, to be at their absolute best here tonight. The fireworks are about to start. And here they are, the darlings of college football and the rage of San Antonio. UTSA, the Roadrunners at 11 and 1, 7 and 1 in Conference USA. How did they get here? Well, they were 11 and 0, and they got to 22 in the college football poll, stubbed their toes last week against North Texas. And they bring an offense that, yeah, they're balanced. But man, are they explosive. Yes, they are, man. That first game was an instant classic fireworks galore, and it started for UTSA on the ground with their powerful back, Sincere McCormick. He's a guy that can jump cut, has great vision and patience, but can also take it to the house. But really, the story was the best game of the career of Frank Harris. Six touchdowns he threw. The lefty was on point. He got everybody involved, including wide receiver DeCourt. Dorian Clark, who had seven catches rich for 160 yards. Here's one of his three touchdowns. It was a thing of beauty. If you haven't seen Western Kentucky this year, you are in for a real treat. But nobody, nobody expected them to get here because they were one in four after they lost that game against UTSA. Look at where they are now. 
They are eight and four, seven straight wins. And if you haven't seen Bailey Zappi, you are missing something. Bailey Zappi, if you like quarterback play, will make you happy. Sorry to be corny and cheesy there, but this dude is the best quarterback that we've seen so far this season. He's the FBS leader in passing yards, yards per game, and touchdowns. The guy distributes the football. The coaches have given him the keys to the Ferrari. It's so important that he drives that car safely tonight, but he plays well with others, distributes the football. There's going to be a handful. Here's how crazy this game was. Over 1,200 yards of total offense. There were only five punts in this game and 18 kickoffs. And here they are playing for the Conference USA Championship. Tyson Helton in his third year, he told his team after that loss, if we play our cards right, we'll see these guys again. Seven wins later, they see these guys again. And these guys are really good. And Jeff Trailer is their coach, high school coaching legend in all the state of Texas. And he's taken this program, obviously, to big heights. Down below on the field with a big crowd is Jenny Dell. How'd they get here, Jenny? Yeah, the local community is stepping up big time here in San Antonio. So even though UTSA is hosting this matchup, and typically student tickets are free during the regular season, in the championship it's completely different. Conference rules makes the players and the fans pay for tickets so students need to buy them and the community wasn't having that so they set up an account where local businesses alumni and fans they could donate to pack this dome well over a hundred thousand dollars was raised every student in here attending this game for free the extra money going towards creating a first class bowl experience for the roadrunners and guys coach trailer told me the community has rallied around this team in unexpected ways he called it a cinderella story uh, for sure jenny and there's still a big crowd outside there was a huge tailgate scene tonight outside the Alamo Dome. Crowd's still arriving. Aaron Taylor, the atmosphere in here is going to be exceptionally loud. It was rocking. And Bill Clark, the, the head coach of UAB, when they played here a couple weeks ago with that game that went down to the wire, said that is the loudest indoor environment I've ever been a part of. Crowd noise, certainly a factor here for Western Kentucky on the road. UTSA has to use that to their advantage. Beanie Bishop from his goal line for Western Kentucky. And Bishop blasted at the 20, down to the 22-yard line. The legend of Bailey Zappi grows every week. I mean, just look at these numbers. These are not misprints. No, they're not, Rich. This young man is, is so talented. What he does, the coach is telling us he's a student of the game, so I just let him go to work. He feeds off of that. He loves that he's got total control of this offense, and this is his moment to shine. Zappi on first down, quick throw, and it's incomplete. And the crowd is fired up already. The offense for Western Kentucky, they like to go fast. They have a terrific offensive line. who has been together all year. Yeah, and this old line has been huge for this team all season long. 4,500 combined starts this season. And they'll need to be at their best today on the road with crowd noise versus a front seven that has 34 sacks so far. Zappi throws quick hitters and slants and bubble screens and great deep balls. Jareth Stearns, his best receiver, in motion. And Zappi will roll his way. Fires it. It's dropped. Joey Beljan, the tight end. The defense, a lot of pressure on the secondary. Yeah, D'Angelo Malone, keep your eye on him when he's on the field for Western Kentucky. But Corey Mayfield, the DB, is the best cover DB for UTSA. He and the rest of the secondary are going to need to step up and prevent the big pass plays, Rich, that plagued them last time they played the Hilltoppers. Crowd is on their feet right now. comes Zappi steps up fires one and it's caught there that Stearns in a crowd he's right on the stick and I think he's got the first down he does great job of pr protection Zappi steps up look at the location of that football against tight man coverage and look at the tempo and a timeout already 
by UTSA. Timeout, UTSA. That is their first. It'll be 30 seconds. Woo! Chance for maybe all of us to catch our breath. We saw Western Kentucky Rich come out and be a little disjointed. We saw an errant pass right out of the gate by Bailey Zappi. Joey Beljan dropped a ball that hit him in the hands, but they converted that big third down. Slow starts have been a problem for the Hilltoppers this season. And the defense has to adjust to this tempo, which is extremely rapid. Stearns over the middle. This guy has caught 128 balls this year. That's amazing. It's incredible. But he's also coming off his season low four receptions for just 28 yards last week. This young man is a tremendous football player. Didn't play as well as maybe he's used to against Marshall, but he's the go to guy. Had 22 targets in their game on October 9th. So a first down, and that quieted the crowd down at least for a moment. But well, here they come again. Like that matchup up top. Zappi bounces it outside and then dives for the 40. It's a gain of seven. It'll bring up a second down and about three. They brought some outside pressure off the edge, but nobody had contained. Zappi made the right read and made him pay. Little pump fake. And go, man open, Tinsley with a catch. Tinsley to the 10, Tinsley to the end zone. Just like that, Western Kentucky is on the board. Their double stack, bubble slant concepts that they use, they run an extension off this as a go route. The defense plays their eyes go to the bubble screen and they get caught and they get caught sleeping and Western Kentucky takes a shot over the top. It's one of the wrinkles that this offense led by Zach Kitley, the offensive coordinator, does so well. 61 yards on the throw. How do you take a crowd out of the game? You walk into center stage and you throw a dart. Bailey Zappi. Mike uh, Mitchell Tinsley and an early touchdown for Western Kentucky. That didn't take long, less than a minute, seven nothing Western Kentucky. Keys to the game brought to you by Ryan. Well, for Western Kentucky, they have to be chunk-tastic, just like they were there. That's the best way to quiet this crowd. And defensively, they need to be insincere with their run defense. UTSA would like to have some balance. Western Kentucky can't let them do that. And for UTSA offensively, start fast, sustain drives, and score touchdowns. Tonight, their best defense may be a good offense. And then finally, defensively, UTSA needs to steal some possessions. Rich, as good as Bailey Zappi's been, he will put the ball in jeopardy at times, especially downfield, and the Roadrunners have to find a way to create some opportunities off of it. Corey Munson with a strong kick through the end zone, and we turn our attention to Frank Harris and UTSA. Well, boy, oh boy, that didn't take long for Western Kentucky to score, and then the game that they played on October 9th, Frank Harris threw a dime on the third play of the game and scored. He is the key tonight both with his legs and with his arms. He got banged up. He didn't finish their game last week against North Texas. They've got to keep him healthy. He does a masterful job of moving the sticks, but that offensive line has to help. First touch from the 25. Harris to the sideline. Caught Zakari Franklin. And Franklin has got six yards. Well, keep your eye tonight on right tackle Mason Brooks. He and this offensive line have been a huge for this season or this team all season long. But Spencer Buford, the left tackle, is the guy that brings the pop. On the carry, Sincere McCormick, his first touch. He is a complete running back. He really is, Rich. I love his vision and the way that he jump cuts. He sees the hole and hits it. No wasted motion. He can also pop a big run. They will throw to him as well. Harris, pump fake, waited for the window, and right on the money. 
And that's great, Rich. Accuracy isn't just knowing where to throw, it's knowing when to throw. That pump fake opens the window. The defensive line jumped, but that's the sort of execution you need at quarterback. Harris looking very good here early. Josh Cephas with the catch, 66 catches on the season. And McCormick straight ahead. He's a big, he's not tall, but a big body. Now defensively, there's playmakers on this side of the ball. Yeah, I mentioned the left tackle, Spencer Burford. He's going to have to block D'Angelo Malone for Western Kentucky. Relentless motor knocked Grant Wells out of the Marshall game. They got to make sure 10 gets blocked. Roadrunners play with tempo. I mean, they wouldn't be the Roadrunners, would they? Harris darts away out of the pocket, races to the sideline, and turns up and out of bounds and inside the 25-yard line. Jaden Hunter caught him. Huge chunk of yardage. This is what the lefty brings you. Harris is so mobile. The kid grew up here in San Antonio. You have to think that this game means a lot, but that's the sort of playmaking ability that's hard to defend. They mark it inside the 24. Drop snap, and McCormick is swallowed up. He's going to lose a yard. Gang tackled there. A.J. Brathwaite, the first to get him. Been impressed with this front seven of Western Kentucky led by their defensive coordinator Maurice Crum the great linebacker at Notre Dame. He's a young defensive coordinator. He talked about how he put too much on this unit early on in the season. They simplified things have been playing very much better as a result. Blitz comes Harris steps through it and busts through to the 10 to the end zone touchdown Roadrunners. Well, you're going to see they're going to bring some pressure here, and there's no lane integrity. That allows Harris to get up inside and be able to gash him. Because of the defense, it's man coverage. There's nobody there that's assigned to the quarterback. Harris sees it, triggers, and scores immediately. 7 points, 75 yards, 215. We put a little over three minutes, <laughs> and both teams have gone length of the field. Everybody take a deep breath. AT, this is fun. 7-7 seven, seven already. Harris takes the snap. It's low. He picks it up. He's going to throw a pass into the end zone. Caught! Gordon catches it. Oscar Cardiff with the gap. Touchdown, UTSA! That play came with... Three seconds left against UAB, and the program history is not long. It started in 2011. Larry Coker, the former Miami coach, was the first coach here. Moved to FBS in 2012. First 10 years, yeah, a little over five wins per season. This year, in the top 25 almost the entire year. 11 0 start. That win over UAB clinched. The division title. Beanie Bishop bounces outside and runs out of bounds. And we check in with Jenny Dell. Hi, Jenny. Hey, guys. I know we've been doing this for a long time, but I've got to say that this is actually one of the loudest environments that I have ever been a part of on a football field. I know that they're expecting around 40,000 fans waiting for the final count there, but it is so loud down here, you can't even hear what you're thinking. So I'm expecting this game to, to definitely be interesting when it comes to these guys talking to each other down on the field. Yeah, Jenny, that's a great point. And crowd noise is the best friend of a defensive line. Great opportunity for the Roadrunners to get after Zappi. Zappi hands it off. Noah Whittingham. And he gets about two yards. Both teams throw the ball a lot, but both coaches told us this week we want to establish the run game. That is Zach Kitley, the wonder kid, the 30-year-old offensive coordinator. He was with Houston Baptist. Tyson Helton called him, asked if he was interested in coming. He came. And guess who followed? Bailey Zappi and three of his receivers. Three man rush, lots of time. Zappi deep again. Tinsley again makes the catch inside the 20. Mitchell Tinsley. Mitchell Tinsley's lined up inside on the 
three man bunch formation right there. The safety was late getting over. Antonio Parks has to get over the top and help there. Zappi again, quick throw, overthrows Tinsley. And it's incomplete second down at 10. Well we started the game Rich talking about big plays really being the defining factor in the first game. It showed up already here for both offenses. Western Kentucky had 10 chunk plays which are 20 yards or more in that matchup. Now this is something you'll see the defense will sub itself out if the offense subs the defense can sub and they take their time to allow their teammates to be able to catch their breath. On second down Zappi throws that's Whittingham with the catch and he dives across the 15. Well short of the first down it's going to be third down and about five. I thought coming into this game that the red area was going to be important. That's anything inside the 20, Rich. The difference in a ball game that this is explosive between seven points and three points can add up pretty quickly. This is an important down here for Western Kentucky. Blitz comes. And Zappi just grounded it. He didn't like the looks. Uh, there what was a foul for intentional grounding. There was a receiver in the area. And Tinsley was the intended receiver. Excellent job by UTSA of reading this and a great decision by Zappi to not put the ball in jeopardy and kick the field goal. The other thing he may have seen he had an offensive lineman that was 10 yards downfield. That may be one of the reasons he grounded the football. As long as that ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage you can get downfield. He just didn't want a turnover. Narvison field goal attempts up and good. Woo. Wasn't a touchdown but it's more points five minutes in conference USA championship game in Western Kentucky UTSA putting on a show. have a one conference loss that doesn't keep you out of the hunt by any means and our football team knows that and they'll rebound and you know hopefully we'll, we'll hit some good days ahead of us here soon some good wins ahead of us and it ain't over we got one more better days indeed Tyson Helton and the Hilltoppers won seven straights he is the son of a coach Kim Helton Longtime head coach in college football, of course, Houston. And his brother Clay spent a long time at, at USC as well. The Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway is back in 2021 and helping deserving students achieve their college dreams. You can learn more at drpepper.com. Seems like all we've done is talk offense here for the first <laughs> five minutes. If you are a defensive coordinator for either one of these teams, Aaron Taylor, I mean, you, you, I know you got a game plan, but right now you may want to rethink some of that. Yeah, you got to get everybody settled down. You knew coming into this game that both of these offenses were explosive. As this first quarter goes on, things will start to settle in. Little toss there to DeCorey and Clark, and Clark is across the 35. Spills over the 40 out to the 41. That's a 16 yard game and plays like this really help your run game because it takes advantage of the quick response and trigger by the defense. That's going to hold them in their lanes a little bit and may give them a chance to open up the run game and get their backs going. It's a great point. It goes as a pass because it's forward but it's essentially a run. Harris throws an inside shot to Zakari Franklin. He's out to the 48 and that's another seven yards a really nice block that time by Joshua Cephas number two Barry Lunny the offensive coordinator said you can't play in this offense if you're not going to block as a wide receiver and look at the offensive lineman getting downfield Maka with a great finish there Frank Harris said that for him his best throw is a deep ball sincere McCormick and McCormick gets to the 48 his offensive coordinator said I like the short game that gets him in rhythm and that helps the deep ball. It builds confidence Rich for a quarterback if you can get those high percentage 
completions, you get yourself into a rhythm, but this is a perfect point in the field, especially on first down, to possibly take a shot. McCormick. You talked about Maurice Crum, the defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky. Last week at Marshall, they played really well. They had a pick six, four sacks, gave up just 325 yards of offense. And they do some different things. You'll see the defensive ends that stand up, and I asked him why he does that, and he said, so the, my guys can see. They still have to play the run and rush the passer, but when they're up, they get to see more of the offense. McCormick, the man in motion, and he's got a nice lane. Down to the 31 yard line. That's a gain of 13 yards. Really nice job on the edge by Oscar Cardenas, the tight end number 84. He doesn't hold, but he just kind of body presents him around so that McCormick can get to the outside edge. And it's clear right away that UTSA is attacking the Hilltoppers on the perimeter. And thus far, the Hilltoppers don't have an answer. Brendan Brady in the backfield replaces McCormick. First to 10. Time for Harris. Running out of it, flips it over the bench. Second down, 10. Missed opportunity here for Frank Harris. He had a. There's no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the pocket, and the ball went beyond the neutral zone. Keep rolling it, guys. Now he can roll to his left there. There was a good job by the defensive end not letting him do that. But if Harris had been able to keep his eyes back to that left side, they might have been able to pick up a completion to Leroy Watson, who was pretty wide open. 10-7, Western Kentucky on top. UTSA, second possession on the move. This is Brady, senior, Texas native. This, this roster, as you would expect, is just absolutely loaded with Texas football talent. It's unbelievable. The Texas high school pipeline that feeds these universities and universities all over the country is exactly what Jeff Trailer has done to take advantage of. Told us that he had four or 5,000 phone numbers of Texas high school coaches <laughs> in his phone. As we take a look at the heart of the defense Time for out. Western Kentucky, Jeremy Darvin. Darvin on his way to the sideline. Right now, seven plays, almost 50 yards on this drive for Frank Harris and the Roadrunners. Now, Jeff Trailer has coached in games with a similar feel. He's won state championships in the state of Texas. He was a legend at Gilmer High School, spent 15 years there, won three 4A titles. So successful, they named the stadium there after him when he left. Texas high school legend. And you got to keep in mind, UTSA had never won more than eight games in any season prior to this one. So he's continued that success that he had on the high school level here, and UTSA has a chance to win a championship as a result. They're down five. Got to get down to the 21 yard line. McCormick, he's close. Right on the stick. Sideline says he has it. Officials. Thought he was a little bit short. Great job of triggering that time by the safety for Western Kentucky, A.J. Brathway. He's short. It's fourth and less than a yard. And they quickly line up to go for it. Western Kentucky calls a timeout. Timeout, WKU. That is their first. It'll be 30 seconds. Again, doing a great job of circling the defense, and McCormick tries to get upfield. It's Jaden Hunter and the safety, A.J. Brathwaite Jr. right there. That last hit, I think, that's going to keep him a little bit short. I love Sincere McCormick. This kid was the Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year, and he is such a weapon for this offense. He's 5'9", 205. He can get you the tough yards. He can bust loose for a 50-yard run. You look at what he's done. Now, you and I have seen all three of these running backs Certainly have. this year. We saw Iowa State. We saw BYU. And now we get a look at Sincere McCormick. And they throw the ball to him as well. Coming into this game, he had 19 receptions, made some big catches in the game that they played on October 9th in round one of tonight's matchup. 
He's just the type of player that you have to find a way to get involved and they've certainly done that. And unfortunately the heart of the defense the big defensive tackle Jeremy Darbin going into the locker room have to have Jenny make sure she keeps an eye on that. Fourth down less than a yard. McCormick's hit and he gets forward wow. and gets the first down and that's the strength he has. Great job by Demetrius Kane, 28 right there. But the pile gets pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. Excuse me, that was Matthew Flint. But that's the power of McCormick that moves the sticks. Drive continues from the 20. Harris over the middle. And Zakari Franklin, I'm not sure if he lost sight of the ball. Yeah, something seemed to be a little bit off there that fourth down situation we saw Jeff Trailer told us coming into the game he said you may not see my punter tonight if my defense is struggling that's certainly been the case that's an easy decision with the way this game is going on this point of the field but we've also seen him all season long be much more risky when he's in negative territory being backed up he went for it on his own 43 and his own 34 in the first matchup Harris's throw McCormick makes a nice spinning catch to the 15. And sincere is out of bounds around the 12, short of the first down. Watch the blocking out here in the perimeter. This is unbelievable. The ball's not thrown really well, so McCormick has to go backwards with it. But just a great job there by DeCorey and Clark on the perimeter. And there were some other great blocks there as well. These guys take it seriously, and that's a big reason why they're having success here. Tyson Helton all the way down to that line of scrimmage to speak to an official. They're down two. He may throw it. Harris out of bounds. Has the first down. Josh Cephas to Frank Harris. <laughs> I love it. Things are getting chippy. Now remember. Harris caught a 23 yard touchdown in the first version of this game on October 9th and you see the little grab there by Brathwaite. These guys are chippy. You'd expect that in a championship game but you have to play smart. McCormick in the backfield. Tough going up the middle. And remember that middle no longer has Jeremy Darvin in it. Western Kentucky trying to slow down UTSA. Really nice job by that front seven of bucking themselves up. UTSA has been a revolving door up front with the offensive linemen. So many different guys. They made it seven plays into week one before they had their first starter at left tackle go down. Ten plays later, their center goes down, but somehow they played well enough to get here. McCormick. Touchdown. Just great push up front and the power of McCormick. You see the way that he knew where the goal line was, Rich. He was able to get up underneath the defense. A great job of preventing penetration up front. And McCormick scores his first touchdown against Western Kentucky this season. Extra point up and good. 14 plays, 75 yards. It started with the fourth down play and the power of McCormick. That extended the drive. They went with a quarterback pass, but McCormick finishes it off to take the lead. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ryan, a leader in global tax services and software solutions by Ram Trucks, J.D. Power's number one brand in new vehicle quality, and by Marco's. Pizza lovers get it. San Antonio with the Alamo, the Riverwalk. They've got uh, orange and blue on the buildings here. It's the seventh largest city in the country, and they've never had a hometown college football team until 11 years ago when Larry Coker started this program. And it's been amazing the response. I got to tell you, we talked about at the top of the show coming into this game, you could feel the energy outside. 
Tomorrow morning, starting at 9 Eastern, it's double the Serie A gameplay. CBS Sports Network heads across the pond, a face-off between Milan and Salernitana, followed by Roma taking on Inter Milan at noon. Catch all the action right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Bailey Zappi now is the career leader for a single season, passing Brandon Doty. Brandon Doughty with his two years. Had a terrific run. 2015-2016 Western Kentucky won a title. Malachi Corley with a catch. And he's got 10 yards. Maybe a little short of the first down. Half a yard short. Quick pitch. Jared Stearns in the backfield. And he races out of bounds. Blink and you miss it. This is up, up tempo. They move so quickly. There's sometimes they snap the ball. There's only been three or four seconds off the play clock at 32, 31, 34, 35 sometimes. But this, when they make adjustments on their near sideline, the defense is allowed to change as we're seeing UTSA do here. And that's the way they slow things down. So not just personnel change, but, but they're trying to just take the air out of the ball. No question. Completely legal and allowed. Noah Whittingham, he's got a nice eight-yard gain. Whittingham, 5'10", 190, Fort Valley, Georgia. You know, it was really interesting, Zach Kitley, when Western needed to get their offense going, he went to the run game in the second quarter and second half last week, and it seems like he's doing it here. And yeah, Daywood Davis with the catch. He Look, he can make all the throws. And, and people say, well, he's, you know, it's the system. But guess what? This system is in the NFL now. And guys like him are having success. I know he's not a big name, but he comes from a tree of the air raid from Texas Tech. And there ain't a lot of leaves on that tree, as he reminded us. And everyone has their own little adjustments off of it. But he's a beautifully creative play caller. Blitz comes. Zappy throws. Tinsley again. He's hit him twice on deep throws. One for a touchdown. Another for a big chunk of yardage. Yeah, Tariq Wooden was in good job being in phase. You would want the receiver, Tinsley, to stack him a little bit. Great job by Zappy of throwing the football in a position that allows him to track to get it. There's just a little too much air underneath it. It's those deep shots and those outside lanes that Western Kentucky has hurt people all season long with. Tariq Woolen matched up against Tinsley. Specton Blitz, and they have the back realigned. Stern's in motion. Zappy goes. Got a man. Corley's there, and he's bobbled it and dropped it. Rich, we talked about drops in the first game back in October. Seven legit drops by this Western Kentucky team. We saw Jared Stearns drop a fourth and six, and here Malachi Corley in his hands drops a touchdown. Those are plays that lose you championships, not win them for you. Third and ten, blitz comes, Zappi escapes, sets, fires, incomplete. And a whistle. They're going to blow the play dead. You couldn't hear the whistle. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 18, five-yard penalty, still third down. A drop by Corley, Daywood Davis with the false start, the crowd noise having an effect. You see right here off the outside oh, edge, yeah. Clarence Please Hicks. Please reset the game clock to three minutes and eight seconds. Was unabated, and that's why the officials blew the whistle. So the Hilltoppers get another shot at it, third down. That actually saved them, especially if they can convert here. 
Off the edge, blitz coming, Zappy tie, little dump off. That's Stearns racing for the sideline. And he's close, and I think he's got the first down at the 32-yard line. That's what the air raid does. It's just the underneath mess routes, those shallow crosses, double shallow crosses inside. It basically becomes a, a unique version of a pick route, but that's how eight what he does when he hits the ball in his hands. They threw a one yard pass and Stearns did the rest. So that procedure penalty works out for them. Jareth Stearns 17 yards on the catch. His brother Josh Stearns the younger brother is in the game now number nine. And Whittingham. Hit at the 27. And it's going to be a gain of about six. These safeties are triggering so quickly. That time at Sam linebacker Dadrian Taylor is fourth on the team in tackles. Had a big hit on the sideline versus Stearns in the first Western Kentucky game where he ejected him down by the goal line. But it's that aggression from that second level that's also allowing these receivers to get behind him. Zappy, another short throw. This one is caught short of the first down. And that's Josh Stearns, the freshman. They're both from Waxahachie, Texas. And of course, both he and his older brother, Jareth, transferred from Houston Baptist. Oh, the double stacks. Take a look at this formation. This is where they do the bubble slants and have a lot of variations off of them. And they run it. And Whittingham has got the first down to the 20. It's or excuse me, Kyle Robichaux with the carry. <laughs> good correction yeah. there, buddy. It, it's really good to see Western being able to utilize the run game effectively. Zappi's throw. Oh, diving catch made at the one. Ben Ratzliff. Stack position again, and this is where the speed and tempo comes up. Your UTSA, you got to get yourself set and play tough here. Zappi is going to lose yardage. We saw Zappi get free when they blitzed off the outside edge. I like the play call, but this time UTSA was ready. That's a beautiful throw. Just plucked it out of the air. Great job by Ratzliff. Drops have been a big problem for this team all season long. As much success as they've had, they need a little bit more of what 22 just showed. It's amazing because they've, they've completed it. An amazing amount oh. of passes. Ball is loose. Wow. We've seen both centers have errant snaps so far in this game. This isn't a crowd noise thing. And that's just a simple slide protection to the left. But Bailey Zappi was very lucky to get his hands on that ball and cover it up. Third and goal. Final seconds. First quarter. Rich, they were on the one yard line. Wow. There was two seconds left in the quarter, and UTSA takes a timeout. That's it. Or did they, is it end of quarter? The signal was a UTSA timeout. I agree with you. I saw it. Here's the announcement. Timeout. UTSA. That is their second. Please reset the game clock to three seconds. Wow, that's a mistake potentially to take that Thank time you. out there. But you got to understand as quickly as Western Kentucky gets to the ball, maybe he was just preemptively trying to make sure he didn't get himself beat because we just saw them convert a third and 15, the series of downs before. But you have to know the situation. And with three seconds there, you would have loved the end of quarter to come. But apparently, Trailer didn't want to take the chance. There's a lot of options here on third down and goal from the 16 for Western Kentucky. Well, we saw them run some shallow crosses. You've got fades here. You've got screens. The field condenses here, so UTSA can do a better job of keeping the receivers in front of them. But you've got four strong to the short side of the field. I'd keep my eye there or one-on-one -on -one down here at the bottom. Zappi lobs it. Corner, Tinsley. 
No flag, no catch. And no more time left in the first quarter. And an unhappy Tyson Helton right now on the Western Kentucky sideline. What a start we've had here in San Antonio. End of the first quarter, you're watching the Ryan Conference USA Football Championship. Fourteen ten, one quarter in the book. The Conference USA Championship in Western Kentucky has had some some issues. They certainly have. We saw Belgium the tight end drop what would have been a first down, and then number eleven Corley with a drop of a touchdown. Then the bad snap that had this team that started on the one yard line now has them on fourth down, three plays later, trying to make a field goal. Braden Narvison really accurate. He's hit 34 of his last 38. He has a couple of 53 yarders in his career. This from 33 and straight on. He is a good kicker. Defenses have yet to make a stop. And we step aside for 30 seconds. It's a one point game. It's the most. Jeff Trailer and the Roadrunners trying to get to 12 and 1 and a one point lead. <laughs> Look, at Look at that. That's man. crazy. <laughs> one quarter. No punts. Every drive is yielded points. Now we saw on that throw to Harris. And that one drive now they've done that before here. Yeah this was the October 9th game. This was a 23 yard touchdown that Frank Harris scored. We've seen him be dangerous with his legs. They go back to that play. This time Western Kentucky defends it a little bit better. Brathwaite did a nice job of getting him out. They would go on to score there with Cecil McCormick punching it in. But just one of the many ways quarterback zero can hurt you. 47 yards rushing has come on just two carries. Of course, he has that catch. Fires it and an incompletion. Zakari Franklin lost it. And so that's a, that's a drop by Franklin. And what you see there, a rollout to the left with the left-hand quarterback. This is just a simple comeback to the sidelines, and he's got to make that catch. Jeff Trailer said our, our best defense in this game might just be our offense and if we can have long drives that eat up clock and that's exactly what they did their last time out. It's the ball out of the hands of Western Kentucky. Sincere McCormick to the 29. And I agree with you Rich and that's why I think Western Kentucky on their last offensive series they went back to the run game as I mentioned before that was really the technique that they used a week ago against Marshall to get them back in the game. The first two or three plays of the second half were all runs that got them settled down and opened up their pass game that was lights out in the second half. Third down in five. Harris McCormick got the first down stays on his feet has more out of bounds right around midfield. Just a great job good protection up front. And Harris getting the football out early a poor tackle out there on the edge by Trey Shaw and McCormick moves the sticks. Into Hilltopper territory the 49. Harris pulls it fires it sideline again. Franklin the catch tiptoes out of bounds. The junior out of Cedar Hill Texas really seems like from a play calling standpoint UTSA even though they're using some tempo. It seems like they're trying to take some air out of the clock. They're using the run game. They're moving things. They're huddled up, but they're not necessarily going at a breakneck pace. To me, they want to stay on schedule, but they also want to keep the ball away from Western Kentucky. There's a pump fake. Harris racing for the sideline. Receiver comes back, and it's incomplete. Understand the decision by Harris to throw there, but. I think him running it trying to pick up three or four more yards and shortening this third down might have been the better choice. But Rich again talking with this staff this is four down territory. 
Obviously UTSA would like to pick that up here but because they're across the 50 because their defense hasn't been able to stop Western Kentucky if they don't pick up the first down here they should have two plays called to meet to get to the line of scrimmage and try to convert two of three on third down McCormick's got this the first down to the 36 yard line McCormick is such a smooth runner his eyes the most important thing for a running back are the eyes. The eyes carry the feet. That ability to jump cut there just move the sticks. He's remarkable the way that he finds those hidden yards. Harris has yet to take that deep shot. McCormick to catch. And he's corralled at the 30. Gain of five. Second down and five. Immediate pressure off that left hand side. Watch this move. His ability to evade right there. Two defenders keeps his eyes downfield as mobile as he is. What I love about him is he keeps his eyes down the field and ain't the prettiest of pass passes but it sure was effective. And Maurice Crom defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky told us limit him from going to his left. That's not happening right now. Little flip that could be a throw. Brendan Brady does as it caught. Wow. Yes. Franklin. Wow. Indeed. I think that kind of makes up for that missed comeback in that drop. He's been masterful on these plays. Goes up and high points the football. That is tremendous defense there by Kincaid. And somehow Franklin's concentration with the one hand, his left only secures it. Ball was bouncing around when he rolled over, but it looked like a clean catch. 24 yards, and on the doorstep are the Roadrunners. Brady. Touchdown. Coming into this game I wondered whether or not this offensive line could rise to the occasion and win their matchup with a much improved Western Kentucky defense and boy they certainly have here through these first two quarters. Another long drive nine plays 75 yards and some fun along the way. Certainly there's been a lot of fun. How about this the double pass and the high point by Zakari Franklin to set it up and then Brendan Brady and that big offensive line does the rest. UTSA converts in the red zone again. Alamo Dome home of the Roadrunners of UTSA and the Conference USA Championship. Our college football playoff poll is powered by Ram Trucks. Man, we get the opportunity to see one taken on three tomorrow evening on CBS Sports. Michigan, you got to take your hat off to Jim Harbaugh and what that team has done. Oklahoma State to me is interesting. It's going to be a good matchup with Baylor. They won the first matchup. If they can win again, I think they're going to be in the playoff. Oregon's on the outside looking in. Ole Miss has had a great year, but that Notre Dame team at number six, naming Marcus Freeman as the head coach, the viral videos about the team responding to him. If there's some upsets ahead of them, Notre Dame could find themselves in the playoff as well. Bailey's happy he's made some great throws. He needs a little help out there. He does. He'd be 75% on the day if his receivers would hold on to the football, but he's thrown the ball for over 180 yards and has had a touchdown. The location of these balls, Rich, has been masterful. Whether it's a deep ball, whether it's against tight man coverage, throwing your guy open like he did there is just remarkable. And you can see why he's the FBS leader in total yards and yards per game. And he's been flawless here in this first half, in my opinion. He had a deep ball that was dropped at the five going in for a touchdown. Zappi fires up the sideline. That's Robichaux with the catch. Look at that. Robichaux is a short yardage back, a guy that they come in to bust through things, and he makes a catch at midfield. And it's a wheel route, and they just let him go. Somebody was squatting down on the outside thinking that Mitchell Tinsley was going to get the football. Nobody picked up. Robichaux out of the backfield and the wheel route hurts him. 
And this is what Western Kentucky is so good at. They can move the ball at will. And right now, UTSA on their back end, they are a mess. Whittingham, flags are down, play is blown dead. Ball start, offense, number 56. Five yard penalty, first down. That's Bo Wilson, the right guard, and again, that's the second false start that we've seen. The first was Daywood Davis. He's right here. Crowd noise, the 12th man on defense for Please UTSA showing up already. It's tough, Rich, when the cadence and the timing, when you can't hear and you have to make calls and adjustments, it's really hard to communicate. Sometimes you have to hold hands. Sometimes you got to slap each other. Sometimes you got to cheat and peek. There's all sort of things you can do. But the one advantage that the offense has is that they know the snap count, but crowd noise nullifies that. It's happy. Another deep ball. This one is in and out of the hands. Mitchell Tinsley. Just an incredible job by Tariq Woolen. He was a game time decision coming in tonight. Watch his right hand right there. He punches the ball out between the receiver's hands exactly like you're taught, and Tinsley can't bring it down. Four receivers punched. Zappi on a four-man rush. He's hit and dropped midfield. Clarence Hicks. Clarence Hicks is the sack leader on this team. Keep your eye there. He's over the right tackle. Mason Brooks, the guy that we highlighted. Brooks oversets, opens up the inside, and Hicks gets his ninth sack of the year, which was a huge one. Third down and forever. Zappi, little dump off. Cofield gets to the 35. It's a nice game. It's right around field goal range, but still short of the first down by about eight yards. I wondered if this was going to be four down territory for Western Kentucky. That sack really hurt him. Instead, their playmaker Narvison is going to come in and try to knock this down. The early difference in this game, Rich, is that UTSA is scoring touchdowns and Western Kentucky's kicking field goals. In his career, he has hit two from this distance of 53 yards. Had the leg, missed the target. Lace is out, kick is up, and wide left. UTSA on top by eight. Welcome back to San Antonio, and boy, oh boy, the difference in this ball game has been UTSA scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Cecil McCormick first, then the quarterback reverse pass to get him down, and then another punch in by Brendan Brady. It's been the red zone, Ritz, that has really been the difference in the game. Take a look at this. The first three possessions, all fair caught, all started at their own 25, and all of them ended in touchdowns. Last weekend, Western Kentucky had issues in the first half against Marshall. Some of them were tackling issues. And that's showing up again here tonight, and UTSA is making them pay in the run game. A little creative. That's McCormick. He's got wheels. Sincerely, touchdown! <laughs> 
65 yards, sincere McCormick. going to be a stretch zone all the offensive linemen are going to run in an area to block their men keep your eye on the left guard right there he pulls them out but take a look at the running lane right here there's nobody everybody from western Kentucky's late from the backside a tremendous block by 74 Spencer Burford up on the play side linebacker was the key block that sprang it we talked about McCormick's burst we talked about his speed and he has been deadly tonight for the meat meeps and remember this is an offensive line that has been banged up all season long first drive of the year they lost one starter five minutes later in their first game they lost another starter and it's been mix and match from that point on it's been musical chairs but boy this team is resilient and that's the sort of thing that you want to do I'll be honest they seemed lifeless the early interviews on in the week you wondered how they would come out and respond but boy oh boy have they ever. Bishop's going to bring it out. Beanie Bishop gets uh -oh. outside. Kicker to beat. And the kicker knocks him out of bounds. Duplessis got him. Rich, this is the worst of all scenarios for Western Kentucky. But that great return right there breathes some life back into him. I really thought that Western needed to come out and have some early success to quiet the crowd. They did that, but UTSA's offense responded. And ever since then, this crowd's been involved, and that's definitely played a factor for the Hilltoppers' inability to finish drives with touchdowns. 48 yards on the return. Last week, Jeff Trailer was not happy with his special teams. A great field position at the 48. Your Western, you have to be relaxed. You see Zappi's trying to communicate, but it's really loud to hear. You don't know what's going on, and they're forced to take a timeout because they can't communicate. Maybe a play clock issue as well. That has not raised the roof <laughs> at the Alamo Dome. <laughs> Let's reset the play clock. Although that, that's being done by the crowd here. Crowd catches his breath and is going to come back. Bailey Zappi knows this offense. If he's got to check it, the noise makes it really difficult. Oh, snap again and whistles again. Kevin Randall, our referee. Oh. We're checking the game clock for the correct time. It ran too quickly initially, then they put 40 on it, and I don't think it moved at all. Now it's at 25, and They've got to make sure that they get that right. And ironically, in a game with two teams that are running hurry up offense. Please reset the game clock to nine minutes and one second. Thank you. <laughs> Very polite. Very polite. So game clock, play clock, we're all set now. First and ten Western. Can they get some points? He falls on it. Absolute disaster. A bad snap cost them seven points earlier in the game. The center's got a nose right over him. You can get nervous sometimes when you have a nose tackle that's directly over you. That's the third one of tonight. The first one got blown dead. They got lucky. But they've got to get that sorted out. They're marching the wrong way. Loss of 23. 
The O line has been the strength of this offense all season long, but tonight they're really hurting their ability to move. Better snap. Zappi's throw. Jareth Stearns. They get some of it back at the 35. But they've got to go all the way to the UTSA 42 for a first down. Uh, honestly, they have that capability. They've been able to get behind the defense of UTSA all night. You see the two high safeties up here. That's designed so that you can't let anybody get behind you. But Western's been doing that all evening. Now they're going almost to a Tampa 2 look. Third down 23. Zappi in trouble. Escapes. Fires. Well short of the first down. Jarrett Stearns to the 47. Great job by Zappi of getting things back and avoiding another sack by Clarence Hicks. We haven't talked much about Zappi's mobility, but sometimes mobility isn't just getting outside of the pocket, it's evading pressure within the pocket. Masterful job there by four, but it fell short. So they went for 10 yards, and that was 12 yards, and yet they're still 11 yards short of the first down. John Haggerty is the punter. We need to introduce the punters when they come on because they're not going to be on very often at all. Wow. Western Kentucky. Timeout. WKU. That is their second. It'll be 30 seconds. The play clock was winding down and they're unable to get the punt off. They need to settle down and catch their breath. But they're they're shell shocked right now, and this is a lot like it was Marshall last week. To Eastern tomorrow, back-to-back -to -back college hoop tip-offs: A10 against Big East with Rhode Island and Providence, and number 12 BYU of the West Coast Conference on the road against Missouri State. West Coast Conference has some players. Santa Clara's good. BYU's a top 15 team. San Francisco's rolling. Jamari Bouye, Drew Timmy, and Gonzaga, of course, are great. But Barcelo and BYU, they look like they're going to be a top 15 team all year. Catch called for and made. 646 left. Are you not entertained? Want to tackle your fitness? Hey Siri, tell me more about Apple Fitness Plus. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome. The Roadrunners up 28-13, and defensive coordinator Rod Wright, he definitely asked linebacker Demetrius Kane what he saw in that last run with McCormick. He was reminding this defense, guys, said, don't get frustrated. We need to stay mentally tough, keep fighting, get after Zappi. And, guys, Coach Trailer calling Coach Wright the spiritual leader of this defense, and the team was locked into everything he was saying. All right, thank you, Jenny. UTSA with a football at 15. Sincere McCormick has had a very nice night, and he dances out of bounds at the 24-yard line. It's a gain of nine. Sincere McCormick's one of those backs. If you block for four yards, he gets you seven. That was completely muddled up on the play side where he wanted to hit it. Western did a great job of canceling the gaps, but McCormick's athleticism allowed him to bounce and pick up almost eight yards. 14 carries, 123 yards, two touchdowns. Second and short. Sincere wow. bounces off, spins away. Uh oh. And just is caught by the shoe tops. Antoine Kincaid saved what would have been another long run. Yeah, Kincaid's one of the big leaders here. It's his job to come up. Defeats the block there, stays square, and then just uses his acceleration to just get the heels of McCormick. Saw those numbers about the, the three running backs for the last two years. McCormick, well over 2,700 yards combined. Harris's throw. Man open, it's Franklin with the catch. Flag down. Back at the 40, near the line of scrimmage. 
Boy, Harris took a shot there. I wonder if they're taking a look at that. It looked to be a clean hit, but man, did he get popped. Remember, he left the game last week against North Texas. There are two fouls on the play, one by the offense and one by the defense. Ineligible man downfield, offense number 58. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 90 of the defense. Those penalties will offset and will replay first down. Lucky break by both teams, obviously, and that call up front for legal man downfield was Terrell Haynes, and you see Jeff Trailer's unhappy, but that's what happens when you run the RPOs, the run pass options. The offensive lineman, it's a called run in the huddle. You're blocking run. It's the quarterback's discretion. If Western is going to take the run away, we're going to hit you with the pass. That's exactly what happened, and luckily for UTSA, they got the personal foul that negated the illegal man downfield. Brendan Brady in the game behind Harris and Brady going outside. Another nice open field tackle. Haven't seen a lot of downfield shots by UTSA. It's been kind of controlled. They've been running some tempo, but it's been a lot of slants and throwback passes. Western, on the other hand, has really taken those downfield shots on the outside lanes. UTSA hasn't done that yet. Blitz. Harris caught. Oh, and wrestled down. D'Angelo Mulley really got away. How did he get out of Malone's hands? Incredible. Gets the ball to Brady. What a heads up play by Frank Harris. You're going to see Malone come off that right hand side. That's a mismatch. He beats Brady. Nice. Gets him off the outside, but Harris gets him the ball and avoids the sack. We've seen some other examples of that this season. Oklahoma most notably to extend a drive. You have to be careful there. Fumbles have been a problem for UTSA this season. Western Kentucky's in a good spot for their first stop. Third down and eight. 39 yard line. We're gonna see what the four down territory call is with a big lead like this. Harris through the pocket. And he's got the first down to midfield. Demetrius Kane would stop. Does a great job of running out of the outstretched hands there of Michael Pitts, who can't bring him down, and the missed tackles hurting him once again. That's the weapon that Harris is. If you're going to get out of your run lanes, I'll make you pay. Into Western Kentucky territory. Under four minutes left, first half. And UTSA has put up 28 points. McCormick back in and goes down. Gain of two. Let's check in with Jenny Dell. Jenny? Yeah, Western Kentucky is without D tackle. Jeremy Darvin, who went into the locker room with about seven minutes to go in the first quarter. The trainers were holding his right arm. It is, in fact, a right arm injury. He's questionable to return, but guys, he hasn't been back to the field since he left. And that's a good reminder, Jenny. Thank you for that because that front interiorly, especially for Western Kentucky, has been getting gashed, and Darvin. The heart of that defense, him not being out on the field, is hurting them in multiple ways. Luis Crumb's defense trying to stop the Roadrunners. McCormick, well, he gets you five. And Rich, this is interesting because you take a look with under three minutes now, UTSA gets the ball back in the second half. We know that Western Kentucky can score so quickly. The Roadrunners would be smart here to bleed the clock so that they don't leave Western any time. We know that they can score touchdowns, but there's a nice balance between playing a little bit more slowly and not losing your momentum. It's a small pathway that UTSA is trying to hit, but they've done pretty good so far on this drive. McCormick in the backfield, rolling to his left, firing, and he hits Oscar Cardenas and the flag. At the 39 might be a pick might be offensive interference. Well, Cardenas came off the ball in motion and you wonder with as open as he came if there was going to be a, a rub or a pick depending on what side of the ball you favor. Pass 
pass interference. Offense, number four. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. That's Zakari Franklin. You got to sell it a little bit more there if you're number four. That's a route concept that everybody runs. We've seen him have the drop earlier. We've seen him go up and high point the football. But that was a costly mistake. If you're a young receiver, you have to sell that. Turn your back to him, rub him, run through him, make him try to avoid you, but you can't just run up to him and stop because it's too obvious he's going to get called every time. And Western Kentucky wants to conserve the clock here and calls a timeout. Timeout, WKU. That is their third timeout. Please reset the game clock to 209. Back to San Antonio after this. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? By Coyote Tractor. And by delicious ice cold Dr. Pepper. The one fans deserve. Hilltoppers had championships in 2015, 2016. They're back in the championship game for the first time since 16. A lot goes into this third down and 18 call for UTSA. Yeah, because of the penalty, they're backed up. It's third and 18. They have to convert. But if they throw a pass to do so and it's incomplete, that leaves a lot of time on the clock for Western Kentucky. Good use of the timeout there by the Hilltoppers. Hilltoppers show blitz. They come with four. Harris is going to keep it. See if they can bring him down. That's not easy. He gets to the 47. And so you can't stop the clock if you're Western Kentucky now and you certainly can run it all the way down and even take a five yard penalty if you're UTSA. Yeah and that's going to leave a minute and 20 on the clock and we've seen Western score multiple times. This is really going to test Jeff Trailer's aggression and what he wants to do. I think the right call is to punt it and make him go the long way. He did not want to see his punter on the field at all tonight. He told us that this week. <laughs> but this is the right decision, yep. especially since UTSA gets the ball back to start the second half. You don't want to be silly here. First punt for UTSA. Uh-oh. Speaking of silly. Well, they were looking to get them to jump. They're going to delay take game. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. They're going to take the penalty. Good strategy. I like it. And great discipline by Western Kentucky. That would have made it a much more interesting decision if it was fourth and three there. But instead, it's fourth and 13 and gives the punter a little bit more room to back up this explosive offense. Jared Stearns, sure handed punt returner. And Lucas Dean, who averaged 45 yards a kick. End over end, looking forward to check up. Stern's a fair catch. No timeouts. A minute 10 left for Bailey Zappi and the Hilltoppers. Halftime report powered by Ram Trucks is coming up. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Kevin Carter, and Danny Cannell from our CBS Sports Network studios in New York. Obviously, the start of championship weekend. Big day tomorrow. They'll preview a lot of those games. We'll get to Everyone's take on this game tonight. Love to hear Danny Pinnell talk about Bailey Zappi a little bit. No timeouts is crucial in a two minute situation like this. Zappi. Clock will stop for the first down. Mitchell Tinsley with the catch. They're built for this. This is a hurry up hurry up offense. There's no question. This is going to be a huge stop for UTSA if they can find a way to do it. Bailey Zappi's got plenty of time to keep moving this offense. And Tinsley again with the catch. That's another 17 yards. It's going to stop the clock. And Western Kentucky right at the line of scrimmage. 50 seconds left. Way too much yardage on those first two plays. UTSA has to firm up a little bit to try to challenge them, but they have to balance that with not getting beat over their head. UTSA is going to take their last timeout. Smart. Let them catch their breath. Let them see 
what UTSA has done, talk to the players about the situation. In a normal situation, with no timeouts, the offense wants to work the perimeter. They want to work the edges. But with these guys as explosive as they are, we've seen them attack the seams a couple times and move the ball 40 yards in just two plays. Tyson Helton, the head coach in the offseason, wanted to add some air raid to his offense. So he looked around, watched some game tape, and when he got the Houston Baptist tape, man, did he like that offense. They had a young 29 year old offensive coordinator, Zach Kitley. He called up Zach Kitley and said, Would you like to come to Western Kentucky and run my offense? I want some air raid. This guy has been at the very heart of the air raid. He had to convince Cliff Kingsbury to hire him. So he and Patrick Mahomes got it. And now look, he's six foot seven. Right. He's, he's a big guy. And in this picture, he's like 25 years old. Made that fateful decision at Rose's Cafe in Lubbock. Said, this is what I want to do. Sonny Cumbie retained him. He asked to be a part of it. Did anything he could. And boy, oh boy, has he become one of the bright play callers in our sport. And of course, Bailey Zappi was his quarterback. Please reset the game clock to 46 seconds. Thank you. Zappi was his quarterback. Zappi decided to come. And three receivers, including Jarrett Stearns, also came from Houston Baptist. On play action, nice shot and catch. And holding it is Cofield out of the backfield. Clock stops, another first down. They're inside the 40. They're doing a great job of striking. Now's a perfect time to take a deep shot. Zap another throw. It's caught. No, it's incomplete. Ball on the ground. First official said no catch. That might actually help the Hilltoppers there. I thought he caught the ball. No. But it came through. You got to be careful there with your head. Also, if you're Jamal Sam, that was a little bit of a spearing situation. Okay, you got 30 seconds and no timeouts. Work the edges, work the end zones. If you work the middle of the field, you got to run up and spike it. Zappi under pressure. Zappi escapes. Looking, running, diving. Clock will not stop. Well short of the first down. That's the worst of all situations. You can't take a sack. I know that wasn't a sack, but it effectively becomes one because of all the time it takes. They spike it, and they have 12 seconds left. This is right at the target line, which would mean a 53 yarder from Braden Narvison. He's missed from 53 in this game. Let's see where this one's going to be placed down. Yep, another 53 yarder. He's hit two 53 yarders in his career. This one was wide left. This one just wide right. And that's a killer. It leaves seven seconds on the clock. I don't think UTSA will be silly here and try and take a deep shot. But again, the Roadrunners are scoring touchdowns. The Hilltoppers are trying field goals, and he slips there and maybe grabs his leg like he was a little shook up. But after a beautiful drive that started off extremely well, the Hilltoppers once again fizzle out when they get near the end zone. And UTSA is the beneficiary. Rich, we've seen Western Kentucky in their game last week against Marshall down by 14 points. Tonight they're down by 15. They came out and were masterful in the second half to earn them the opportunity to play in this championship game. This one is far from over. Well over 600 yards of total offense in this one. UTSA 
28. Western Kentucky 13. After the break, we'll send you back to New York, our CBS Sports Network studio. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Kevin Carter, and Danny Cannell. You're watching the Ryan Conference USA Football Championship. Conference USA Championship game, first half stats, 630 total yards combined. A lot of points, some missed field goals and missed opportunities. UTSA is up 28 to 13. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Taylor. Jenny Dell joins us shortly. You just saw all the offense. The difference in this game has been red zone defense for UTSA. Certainly UTSA has been stepping up and forcing Western to kick field goals. That's been the difference. The Roadrunners have been meet meep and when they get down in the red zone and that's been the difference. It's been defense optional for most of the game but it's been the red zone defense that's been the difference. Yeah and the running game. Certainly for the Roadrunners are Marco's Pizza plays we love. Well, this is the 65 yard touchdown by Sincere McCormick. Western decides to bring pressure off the outside edge. That means that their safety is really the only second level player. And Spencer Burford, the left tackle, stays on track on this outside zone play and blocks him. And once he gets into the second level, there's nobody there to be able to bring him down. We talked about his breakaway speed. There was also some bad eyes there for Western Kentucky. But really, it's been the Roadrunners in that run game that's been the difference and they have to get themselves back in the game now rich last week and against Marshall Western Kentucky scored 47 points and was extremely explosive they've got to have some early success here to get themselves back in this game but they're built to do it all through the end zone down to Jenny Dell hi Jenny hey there when I asked coach trailer about his overall thoughts of this first half of the game he is man this is crazy he's really pleased with how the team is doing in the red zone exactly what you're just talking about but he said defensively they need to eliminate the big plays now for Western Kentucky coach Helen he took the halftime to regroup he told his team remember why you are here remember all that you've been through to get to this game guys I asked him how to slow down McCormick he said we got to rally and we got to tackle <laughs> no easier said than done in that first half no doubt sincere McCormick was outstanding 144 yards with just 17 carries Franklin in motion sincere McCormick no rallying but a, a tackle after a gain of about six first half possessions look at the drives the yardage on these it's amazing. I mean, they came out red hot, and that's what you want to do at home. And because of the success offensively, the crowd noise really played a factor with Western being struggling to move the ball at times. Harris keeps, plunges ahead. He is a strong quarterback. That's a first down for the 36-yard line. Broderick Martin the stop for Western Kentucky. Rich, we knew coming into this game that the Roadrunners wanted to stay balanced. We thought the last game, Frank Harris threw for 349 yards and six touchdowns. But here today, it's been the ground game that has them with a two touchdown lead. Formick, the 38. One thing that helps the run game for UTSA, they don't have tight ends. They essentially have offensive tackles on wheels. I mean, Leroy Watson, 6'5", 275. Oscar Cardenas, 6'4", 275. And I love that you pronounced Oscar Cardenas' name right. We are here in San Antonio. You think it would be Cardenas, but it's not. It's the way that he pronounces it. But he was the guy that made that great tipped ball touchdown against UAB in the final seconds. Second down, seven. And there's your rallying and tackling that Jenny Dell talked about. And that was D'Angelo Malone with help from Darius Ship. Darius Ship won right off the snap. I believe he's right here. Keep an eye there. I think he comes across and gets penetration exactly and rips across the face of the left guard. And that's what you need to do to get the offense behind the sticks. They're down to nine. Frank Harris looking for a lane to scramble, and it closes quickly, and down goes Harris hard 
right at the line of scrimmage. And there's your stop for Western Kentucky. That is a beautiful, beautiful job by the Hilltopper defense. Maurice Crum, the defensive coordinator, credit the downfield coverage. Frank Harris has nowhere to go, but it was the play before this by Darius Ship getting a tackle for loss that forced that throw, and the pass rush and good coverage on the back end did the rest. This is exactly how Western Kentucky wanted to start the second half. Jared Stearns back at his 20. Lucas Dean to punt. That's a good high deep punt. Stearns with a fair catch. Oh. Drops it. Falls out. <laughs> T.S.A. has it. Yes, they do. Things went from as good as they can go to as bad as they can go. That is a ball that Jared Stearns has made a hundred times in his life. But in this game tonight, immediately after his defense got a great stop, he makes a crucial, crucial area on the part of the field that UTSA has been dominant all evening. Donye Taylor on the football. First and ten. Frank Harris and the Roadrunners are back in business. He'll keep, and he's met. Nice job by Demetrius Kane, the senior linebacker. Yeah, and he did a good job of pulling up there as well and not throwing quarterback Frank Harris. There's been some frustration. The energy is high. Remember, this is a rematch, and a rematch that UTSA won largely because of the arm of Frank Harris, but it's been his legs and those of McCormick that have been the difference, particularly down here in the red zone. 52-46 was the score of that first game. That was a win for the defense on that last play. Got a free win there, though. Flag down. Harris, corner, throw! He got it! Touchdown! Zakari Franklin! Offside, 97 defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Not sure how he got it, but he did. Concentration and ball skills, great protection. He's tracking the ball the whole time. The defender is into his body, but he positions his body perfectly. That right hand is free. It's bobbling around, and he secures it as he goes to the ground. My goodness. When it rains, it pours for Western Kentucky. And UTSA rising to the occasion and making the plays that they need. And it starts with a mistake. A fumbled fair catch. And the Roadrunners on a free play with a lot of contact. Franklin, 35-13. The championship game, missed opportunities and mistakes can really hurt you. This was an opportunity where they dropped a touchdown. Then they, they got the football to the one but couldn't convert because of the errant snap. It's just been miscue after miscue. A couple missed field goals. And Western Kentucky has struggled all night long. They've had opportunities, Rich. They just haven't been able to convert. And then their best player, one of the best receivers in the country, the only player over 100 catches so far this season, came in tonight with 127. But he had a couple big drops in the last time they played on October 9th, and that last drop on the muffed punt cost him a touchdown. Vinnie Bishop is deep. See if he brings this one out. Yep, here he comes. Maybe a reverse. No, Bishop. Like out of a cannon. Look at Bishop. Flag down. Bishop out of bounds. This one may come back. <laughs> That's a well-designed return. Maybe not well blocked legally. 
Bishop's been getting loose all night. This is unfortunate. During the return, blocking the back, number 58, return team. A 10 yard penalty being forced from the spot of the foul will be first down. Sunday NFL on CBS doubleheader early games matchup of two of the finest young quarterbacks in the game. Herbert's Joe Burrow key showdown in the NFC North between the Ravens and the Steelers coverage starts noon Eastern NFL today NFL doubleheader action on Sunday on CBS talk about Joe Burrow and Bailey Zappi is chasing Burrow most touchdown throws in a season Burrow has the all time record at 60 and Zappi is at 53 and obviously he'll get a bowl game after this game but he's going to need to uh, throw three or four more here before this night is done to get his team back into it. Zappi's thrown three or more touchdowns in every game this season tonight. He only has one. He had one that was dropped. Zappi it's picked. Intercepted. Antonio Parks. There was immediate pressure on the snap. The center got beat right away. Zappi pulled the ball down and felt the pressure and just made a bad decision throwing that football off target into triple coverage. We saw successfully Frank Robbins, or excuse me, Frank Harris earlier pull one down on the same side of the field. His pass was complete, but this time the defense for the Roadrunner steps up and Zappi now has as many interceptions as he has touchdowns tonight. Frank Harris back out there. He talked at the top of the show that he would put the ball in jeopardy at times. UTSA had to get it and boy did that. He gives it to McCormick. Sincere touchdown. Flag down. Might be celebration. The body language on Western Kentucky right now is as deafening as this crowd noise. Huge mistake by the best players on this team in back to back series. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number three of the offense. That is his first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Towards ejection. That foul will be enforced on the kickoff. We'll have the try. How can a guy named Sincere <laughs> be unsportsmanlike at the same time? He has been masterful tonight. Running with power, with urgency. This offensive line has really taken over. 168 yards, 21 carries, three touchdowns. Wow. A couple big mistakes have cost Western Kentucky 14 points. The pick by Parks. And another score for Sincere McCormick. Forty two thirteen UTSA on top. Let's see who's doing some of the dirty work. Tonight's game brought to you by Coyote Tractor. Well, it's been Sincere McCormick with a little help from his quarterback there with the push with Frank Harris. But this offensive line doing a masterful job. But missed tackles have also been helping McCormick to have an incredible night. The Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year last year, saving his best for last. And really has been the difference here tonight. This is an incredible night. I mean, when you stop and think, this program was started 11 years ago. Larry Coker came from Miami. I mean, to start a program, it takes you two or three years to ramp up. And here they are, about to win a, a championship of 42 to 13. Jakari Moses. And Moses 
to the 35. We check in with Jenny Dill. Hi, Jenny. Well, guys, Sincere has been going off tonight. I spoke with him earlier this week, and I asked where his name came from. He said his mom, Precious, was a huge Tupac fan, and Tupac was supposed to be in a movie called Belly, but as we all know, he passed away in 96 before the filming, so Nas stepped in, and in the intro to the movie, one of Nas's characters' opening lines was, me, my name is Sincere. His mom fell in love with the name, and that's where it came from, fellas. Wow, Jenny. I know you're a big Nas fan. What's your favorite Nas song? Nas is my guy. If I ruled the world, imagine that. <laughs> Anytime we need movie info, Jenny Dell is our go-to. Haley Zappi has a tall hill to climb. Mitchell Tinsley makes the catch. There's a lot of time left, but but Western Kentucky has shown no sign of being able to stop the Roadrunners offensively. And that's really the shock here. I thought that they would do a much better job of that, and it was going to be UTSA that felt the pressure to have to keep up with this high-powered offense, but the offense has shot itself in the foot as well. Zappi surveying, sidearms one, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Corley again. He had Mitchell Tinsley on the shallow cross coming across from left to right on this side. Excuse me, he's come from the number one wide receiver position, but he's right here. He did have an outlet, but he was trying to push the ball down the field. Third down. Whittington in the backfield. So hard as an offensive lineman when the noise is this deafening. Zappi's going to take off. Got to get the first down. Has it. And he dives out to midfield. 16 yards. Great job there. Now it's tempo, Rich. You go fast. Double stacks. Watch the bubble screen and the fake go. It's a go, it's Davis, and he comes back and turns and makes the catch. We've seen some incredible catches tonight. Davis is the speedster with the ability to get behind the defense, six foot two, and just plucks the ball out of the air against tight coverage. Sappy with inside toss. A diving Mitchell Tinsley at the 12. This is one of the cute little wrinkles that the offensive coordinator Zach Kitley likes to do out of that stack formation. They run delays on the bubble slant concepts and they basically let the defense determine where they're going to go and they zig wherever you zag. We heard Danny Cannell at halftime talk about Bailey Zappi. He's been doing his job and he, he has been until he threw that pick. UTSA is going to call a timeout. Timeout. UTSA. That is their first. It'll be 30 seconds. This is an incredible atmosphere here tonight, and I know Jenny Dell's been in, in the middle of it. Jenny, uh, I'm sure a lot of fun down there. Yeah, I actually asked Coach Helton at the half if noise has been a factor here, and he said, no, not at all. We've actually been preparing for this crowd all week long. He said, plus we're a silent count, silent clap team. So he claims that all the costly mistakes and miscommunications is not from the noise, but guys, I'm telling you, it is loud. It is, and when we talked to him this week, he told us that they thought that they did a pretty good job when they were on the road against Michigan State of being able to handle the noise there. He felt that their operation was going to be good, but the difference, and we talked about it from the very first quarter when they missed that first field goal, it's been the red zone. They just haven't been able to complete drives, and here's a great opportunity for them to get a chance to do it, and that's why Jeff Trailer took the time out there. He wants his defense to make these guys to have to try another field goal. Zappi. High on that one, and it's incomplete. All right, we heard Jenny talk about noise, and, and Tyson Helton said, hey, we're a, a silent snap team. What about an offensive lineman and the ability to call signals or call coverages for an offensive lineman? The offensive line is the only position in our sport where five have to function as one. The way that that function takes place is through communication. 
the inability to verbally tell your partner what you're going to do or what to look for is crippling. Cappies. Ooh! Right as the ball arrived, Jareth Stearns paid the price. Tariq Woolen. This is football, man. He felt that. Tariq Woolen has brought the wood tonight. Several very good plays. Try to get this ball to your best playmaker, and he's right there. This is fourth down and six. Zappi's throw is caught. That's Tinsley. And he's in for a touchdown. So finally, Western Kentucky completes a red zone visit with a touchdown. Excellent. I thought Zappi was pressing a little bit on this drive, but he does a good job. The coverage is too soft. And look at that. We just saw Tariq Woolen lay the wood, but he almost was passive there as he allowed Tinsley to walk into the end zone. Narvison to add the extra point. And he hits it. There's a lot of time here, but a huge lead for UTSA. Western Kentucky, an impressive drive. It certainly was. You need your best playmakers to step up when the game's on the line. Bailey Zapley to Tinsley was just that. This Big Farm College Football today, all tomorrow on CBS. Take a look here at the FBS teams with one loss or fewer. UTSA there at the bottom. They were in the elite undefeated until stubbing their toe unexpectedly against a North Texas team that ran all over them. UTSA is looking like they expect an onside kick. I think they need to be ready for that for the rest of the game. Nope, that one's going to go deep. And that'll give us time to recognize one of the great guys in all of uh, college athletics and he was such a, a friend to us here at CBS and, and to many other networks Russ Anderson passed away in April and it, it, it doesn't feel like a conference USA championship game without Russ Anderson no he was synonymous with this conference and just meant so much to the teams and the communities and the people in the game and the championship and we always had a lot of good belly laughs when we were together, and he's certainly going to be missed. UTSA. This is Brendan Brady. He's had a, a nice night spelling sincere McCormick. BD Bishop made the stop after a nine yard carry. UTSA has done a great job this evening of running the football, right? 250 plus rush yards. On the ground. They also want to think about bleeding the clock. 26 seconds left. You don't want to slow yourself down, but you also want to start to think about shortening this game. I know we're still in the middle of the third quarter, but as we saw in that last drive, Western Kentucky can score with the best of them. They scored 47 second half points in their comeback against Marshall. Is that similar to a basketball team that when they're on the run and they, and they play up tempo, when they slow it down a bit, they it, it's a danger that you could stall the offense? It is. You, it, you lose your rhythm and you start to get out of what you're used to doing, and that's the battle for coaches when they're calling plays. Well, it's the third down and two. It feels like a, a rather large third down. Harris, little flip. Oh, spinning and catching that is Brendan Brady. And then he's got the first down to the 44 yard line. That was nifty. Great catch there by number five, Brendan Brady, but he also had number four, Zachary Franklin, in the other flat that was wide open as well. And we know that Franklin can go, but that was a tremendous one handed catch. How many of those have we seen here tonight, Rich? A lot, 11 yards on that pickup. It was a huge conversion to your point because it continues to bleed the clock. McCormick tries the right side. 
And we go down to Jenny Dell. Jenny? Yeah, Western Kentucky D tackle Jeremy Darvin, who went out with seven minutes to go in the first, just walked back out. He's in street clothes with a sling on his right arm. Uh, defensive coordinator Maurice Crum said he's the heartbeat of this defense. So, guys, it is hard to live without your heartbeat, and they're definitely feeling it now. All right, thank you, Jenny. Yeah, I mean, look, he's, he's a. When you need stops, it's guys like Darvin you depend on. Blitz comes, Harris throws it quickly, it's dropped. Josh Cephas couldn't hold it. And that drop also stops the clock. So it was an interesting third down call. If you're UTSA, the goal is to continue to get first downs and extend this drive. You're not watching the clock like you're in a two minute situation. But this is just really good coverage that time by Beanie Bishop, the returner. And I think that spooked the receiver to not being able to control that one. Five of eight on third down. Remember Jeff Trailer told us today that he would be going tonight on fourth down a lot. But he's got a three score lead right now. Harris's throw on the oh wow. What a pop by Antoine Kincaid Man. at short of the first down thanks to Kincaid. There is some physicality going on but how about Frank Harris four for four on third down passing UTSA was only four for eleven throwing the ball in their October 9th matchup but here tonight he's been perfect and yeah this is a situation where if you're UTSA you have to continue to let your offensive line and sincere McCormick take over. Fourth and less than a yard. McCormick stopped. Uh, I don't know. It depends on the spot. It's close. I don't think he has it. Jaden Hunter, the initial hit. I don't think he does either. And this is going to be a heck of a stop and a jolt of energy and breathe some life into this Western Kentucky team. Boys, they're going to be close, Rich, but I agree with you. Zero movement up front. Credit the Hilltopper D line. For winning their matchups across the board there. This just hasn't happened very often tonight. Too much catching up front. Western Kentucky was really aggressive. They triggered their linebackers and came downhill. And that forced McCormick into trying to find somewhere to go when all the gaps were canceled. By more than a dime. And so Western Kentucky. Gets the football. They're down three scores. But this is an offense that in the blink of an eye can put it in the end zone. And it feels like their defense has a little momentum for them tonight. Three score game but great field position for Western Kentucky and Bailey Zappi who's had some highs and some lows been a little bit of a mixed bag early on we saw him find Mitchell Tinsley on the opening drive of a game to get the touchdown he also had another touchdown that was dropped with the double clutch and bad decision to throw the football with the interception led to UTSA's touchdown but then he found Tinsley again and with Tinsley now has two receiving touchdowns which ties the conference USA championship game record that's been done seven times by six different players they should keep trying to feed that young man because five is hot. Best starting field position of the night for Western Kentucky and movement and flags. Procedure. Ball start. Offense number 18. Five yard penalty remains first down. That's the second on Daywood Davis. So Jenny talked to the coaches about the silent count, it not being a problem. That's the third procedural penalty here tonight and the second on Daywood Davis. TSA with three deep safeties. Zappy on the money. Malachi Corley with the catch. Tumbles for the first down. Or excuse me, short of the first down. Out to midfield. Corley a freshman. Out of Orange City, Florida. UTSA has 34 sacks on the year. This would be a great time in the game to unleash that. They bring a blitz. Nice catch. Corley spins away. Short of the first down by about five yards. 
It's third down. Obviously, four down territory for the rest of the night, it feels like. Here comes that dangerous double stack look. Got three releases inside here. Zappy throw. Ooh, big hit. Flags down. That, that could be, be targeted. targeted. Wisdom coming up. Rashad, the, the senior and the leading tackler on this team. And that's the younger of the uh, Stearns brothers. And that's Josh Stearns. Personal foul targeting number zero of the defense. That play is under further video review. Now remember when they review a targeting foul, and here's our first look. Ooh. Yeah. He's gone. As soon as he dropped the head and hit with the crown of the helmet. One of the two factors that they're looking at and the launch with the forearms coming through. The forcible contact to the ne head or neck area. That's going to be the last play of the night for a safety that's played pretty well for UTSA. When the officials in the booth review a targeting, they reofficiate the play. So regardless of what was called on the field, once they get it, it's almost as if they haven't seen the play or the call yet. Here are the elements there on the left, but that was a crucial third down play. So they're going to get a fresh set of downs plus 15 yards. Everything seemingly going the way of Western Kentucky here over these last couple series offensively. After review, the foul for targeting has been confirmed. Number zero has been disqualified. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot with an automatic first down. So that affects your depth at a position that was struggling at times. Shot Wisdom, aside from being a physical tackler, was their leading tackler. And he's also going to be out for the bowl game in the first half as well. Big, 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 big loss for the Roadrunners defensively. Penalty's going to move the football to the 33 yard line. Which puts them in field goal range with that penalty and a fresh set of downs. But as we've discussed, Western Kentucky's going to get themselves back in this ball game. Field goals aren't going to do it. And of course, the rule change, Wisdom does not have to leave the field. He can stay on the bench. Really like that change. Zappy, little quick toss, caught there, Tinsley in traffic, and he ends up getting inside the 30 to the 29. Gain of four. Just a simple, quick speed out. And Tinsley's been the hot guy. Great job of keeping his balance there. He's making players miss. A good pursuit by the guys in blue. Tyson Hilton and the Hilltoppers were down 29. Under four minutes left, third quarter. Pressure. Zappi escapes. Dumps it off and incomplete. Whittington was the outlet. Dadrian Taylor. Who had that big hit on Stearns in the first game completely runs around the tight end but can't complete it and that allows Zappi to step forward who's pretty mobile and throw the incompletion versus taking a sack. That's the sort of pass rush that UTSA needs defensively to get themselves off the field here. Four down territory. Zappi rifles it and it's caught poorly with the catch. That's a first down inside the 15 to the 13. And that was on man on man coverage with Antonio Parks, the young man that had the interception earlier. Zappi delivers the football with precision. 26 yards, end zone shot, it's incomplete. Tinsley, the intended receiver. Felt like there was a little bit of contact there. I disagree. I think that's a good no call. Just seemed to be 
some miscommunication where Zappi and Tinsley weren't on the same page one of the only times tonight. They're an empty five wide receiver set. This is where pass rush can help you. Zappi's 40th throw of the Knights is on the money for a touchdown. Jarrett Stearns. Thirteen yards. Excellent job of finishing the drive by Western Kentucky. Seven plays, 53 yards, just over two minutes. And Rich, the Hilltoppers are starting to inch their way back into this game and going for two to get them to 28. Well, Zappi's in the shotgun. You got the offensive line over on the, the top of your screen. The snap, Zappi's throw incomplete. Joey Belgian. He was there. And the ball was thrown a little far out in front. And they chase those two points and come up empty. But we also saw Belgian have a drop earlier. Great job there hitting Jared Stearns. It was almost too easy. He beat Kalichi Wakuchu. And then here's the two point conversion. It had a really good shot, but yeah, you're right. It was just a little far outside the outstretched hands of Joey Belgium. But when we talked to the coaches and offensive coordinator Zach Kitley, he raved about Belgium's physicality, and that's what I saw on tape too. He said he's the type of dude that likes to put his face in the fan, but he needed more than that to bring that ball in. The stadium has been home to a lot of things. The Spurs for many years, the Alamo Bowl forever, it seems. It is home to UTS. It is home to the, the, the Roadrunners. And UTSA has put almost 42,000 in here tonight. Over 41,000 is in this house for a program that didn't exist until 11 years ago. And they're they're all staying. They're, they're not going home. They know that this is a shootout. They know that things can change in a hurry. But I, I get a sense they want to be here for the celebration at the end. No questions. But they got to give them something to celebrate offensively because UTSA has kind of not been able to move the ball these last two drives. Western Kentucky scored that touchdown in two minutes. There's a lot of two-minute sections left in this ball game. Certainly enough to get. The Hilltoppers back in this game. I think all the clock management stuff that UTSA was doing early in the third quarter needs to go out of the window. They need to get back to what they were successful with in the first half. Harris, quick out. And that's to Corey and Clark. It's a gain of nine. We've been we've been talking certainly about Zappy a lot tonight, but this guy. Frank Harris has been outstanding. He's 12 of 17, 125 yards. He's run for 73 yards. That to me is where he's been outstanding. He's thrown the football efficiently. He certainly protected it. But the way he's extended plays and made them with his legs has been the difference. That's going to be enough for the first down. Another good job by Darius Ship winning his one on one matchup on the snap of the ball, but can't fully bring down McCormick. Young man's just powerful. You block two, he gets you three. There's been so many missed tackles on this front seven for the Hilltoppers this evening. You can add that last one to the list. McCormick in motion. Harris looks his way. He'll keep it. And finds a seam to the 39, gain of four. Really nice job that time by D'Angelo Malone. He's a championship level impactor. He's the type of guy I hated to block because he's got a relentless motor. Last week he had seven tackles, two tackles for loss, a couple sacks, and a forced fumble. And it was that hit on Grant Wells, a quarterback, that really got them back into the game. Cormick on the move, ball's deflected and incomplete. There's there's different thoughts when you're down by that many, 22, you score. Do you chase the points and, and try to make up 
that lost point or that extra point with a two point conversion early or do you wait to the end. I don't know if there's a wrong or a right way to do it but I believe going for it too early can be problematic and I believe that's what happened there. Harris has a lot of time. Quick throw and he found Cardenas and he's got the first down. And that's what his mobility does. He extends the play keeps his eyes down the field. Cardenas is open for quite a bit. He's clapping for his hands give me the ball and he's right there at the sticks. And that's the important part. He got the first down yardage. All he had to do is catch it and get out of bounds. And that's good execution here. We have a little over a minute left here in the third quarter. Harris, well, there's your deep shot. And that's deep. Cephas, intended receiver. That was more of a duck than a road runner. One of the few deep shots we've seen them take this evening. I think he just tried to throw that ball too hard, and that's why it lost its rotation and then velocity. It's like trying to overswing when you're on the tee box, which I unfortunately know all too much about. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Harris efficient. He hasn't had to take deep shots tonight. Clark in motion. Harris steps into the pocket. Another little flip. Another completion. Another first down. Leroy Watson, the tight ends, finally getting involved here. Really impressed with Frank Harris going through his read progressions there. That was his third outlet. He's not a one gun and go guy. He's going through his progressions looking and then finally finds his outlet of Leroy Watson, the 6'5, 275 pounder out of Georgia. That's good quarterbacking. First and ten, McCormick bounces. In the final seconds of the third quarter. Western Kentucky has inched closer. But UTSA is on the move and headed to the fourth and 15 minutes away from their very first conference title ever. Three quarters in the books. Road Runners on top. You're watching the Ryan Conference USA Football Championship. Watching the Ryan Conference USA Football Championship. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Taylor and Jenny Dell. Numbers through three, Mr. Taylor. Well, the run game obviously for UTSA has been the huge difference here, as have the turnovers and red down inefficiency. Right now, what Western is doing is loading the blocks. They're run blitzing. I think RPOs can take advantage of the overly eager linebackers. Took it down 10. Harris firing sideline. No, it's incomplete. A field goal here is uh, is an important number to hit if you are UTSA because it stretches it to a three score game. Been some good and some not so good for Franklin. That was a tough one that you hope he could get his hands underneath, but that would have been a spectacular catch had he been able to make it. For at least five or six yards from a target line here. For Western Kentucky, you have to watch his legs as well. Third down 10. Harris's throw right on the money, and that's a first down. Josh Cephas. Beautiful, beautiful job and execution there. And they look to the sideline. It was a check with me right out of the gate, but it becomes an on the move pick. Just a brilliant design and execution right there. 
Zakari Franklin got lucky he didn't get flagged again for OPI. He was pretty aggressive, a moving screen, if you will. 16 yards now in field goal range for Hunter Duplessis, who's long in his career is 51. So he's got plenty of cushion now. McCormick hauled down. And that's Demetrius Kane. It's about the third or fourth first down run in a row that Western Kentucky's done a masterful job. That's why I was thinking the RPOs, the run pass options, sell the run, let the offensive line come off, but then hit a quick slant underneath to take advantage of the space vacated by the linebacker that's coming up field to stop the run. Maurice Crum, defensive coordinator, four year starter at linebacker for Notre Dame, and two time captain there. Full snap, and Harris is swallowed up back at the 34. D'Angelo Malone got around the tackle, gets the sack. That was huge. He's going to come off this outside edge here. The right tackle sank down inside like he was trying to squeeze, and it just shortened the corner and basically opened the door for Malone. That's a bust up front. There's no way that that should be the design of the pass protection there. They made Malone's job way too easy. McCormick in the backfield, long third down. Quick toss. McCormick back to the 30. So this would be a 47 ish field goal attempt for Duplessis. 23 of 28 on the season. This is a big one, Rich. You pointed out beautifully that if they make this, it becomes a three score game. That really puts the pressure on Western Kentucky. But credit the Hilltoppers for firming up and finding ways to get themselves off the field and force UTSA to kick a field goal, which they didn't have to do in the first half. 46 yards. And that's not going to get it done. And Western Kentucky still has life and still has 12 minutes and 11 seconds. And their offense can get this done. A stop by the defense, a miss on the field goal, still a ball game. This field. Aaron Taylor, if Western Kentucky doesn't make it all the way back, they're going to look at this sequence of events early in the third. Yeah, it started in the second half when Jared Stearns, their playmaker, calls for the fair catch but muffs it, loses it, and the result is a touchdown with a beautiful one handed grab by UTSA. And then after number four makes a touchdown catch, number four gets the interception, and then McCormick takes over and poor tackling in his big legs. To your point, are the difference. And there's another number four, but it's noted it was Franklin with the catch and Parks with the interception. So here we go. We two scores and two two point conversions. Zappi can get you some, fires it, coming back, uh, deflected and incomplete. Josh Stearns. I thought that one had a chance. It was initial coverage was really good. There was nowhere. For Zappi to throw the football, a little bit of a grab there, and then it kind of becomes a scramble drill. The ball's thrown behind Stearns, and he's got to pivot back to it, which takes him right to the defender. And yes, there is some contact there, but it's equal rights to the football. I like the no flag. Second down, 10. Zappi loads up, middle shot, and that's Jareth Stearns, the older brother of Josh, who makes the catch. And the Hilltoppers are inside UTSA territory. Just running a straight seam route, and the safety's just sitting on it. They have let them do this all night long and have yet to adjust. Little toss out to Whittington. Oof. He's popped, but a nice game. Clock rolls. Trevor Harmonson came over and gave him a nice big pop. 
good job of holding on to the football, but this is crucial here for Western Kentucky. This is a heck of a job they get in the end zone here. Second down three, little inside shot. Tinsley with a catch, stretches in, touchdown. They're going to look at this. I'm not sure if he actually was in. Obviously, you need to go for two, but let's look at this. Yeah, he's going to be short, his knees down right there. This is a great look. But it was a great effort by him as well. It's and remember, one. we've seen Western Kentucky get down to the one yard line. And because of the bad errant snapped, ended up having to try to kick a field goal and didn't get in the end zone after being on the one yard line. And this is a very similar situation here. I don't think you can count on one hand the number of opportunities missed tonight by Western Kentucky. They have another one here. This is going to be a first and goal right at the one or just inside of it. And credit these players and staff by the Hilltoppers. They have stuck in this game. And I'll be honest, there's some things we're seeing from UTSA that don't look good. They're looking passive on the back end particularly at the safety spot, letting these guys run open and get behind them. No seeming sense of urgency. Yeah, you've scored a ton of points in this ball game, but now it's... After review, the ruling on the field has been changed. The runner was down at the one-yard line, short of the goal line. It will be first and goal with the one. Well, you just talked about the bad snap. Where do you go in this offense for, for short yardage? What, what does it look like when this air raid needs just one? You try to run some pick routes. You run twins on each side, create guys in space, or get some one-on-ones. Occasionally, you'll give it to Kai Robichaux. I like UTSA's matchup here on the D-line. Robichaux in the backfield. A good snap and it's Robichaux. He's churning and he's in. Touchdown. That was close. Robichaux, the freshman out of Columbus, Georgia. 99 did a great job of coming across Brandon Matterson, but that second effort, what a heads up play by Robichaux to put the ball across the line of scrimmage before his body touched the ground. So this is, of course, Rich, as you mentioned, a go for two situation. And boy, oh boy, does the pressure start to mount. Forty one thousand still here. Low snap, Zappi, time, fires, corner, caught, it's good, Jareth Stearns, what a grab, and Western Kentucky is within eight points of UTSA, they were down 29, and they've come this far. The Hilltoppers, down a week ago against Marshall, left for dead, they came back in the second half, just like they're doing here tonight. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ryan, a leader in global tax services and software solutions. By Ram Trucks, J.D. Power's number one brand in new vehicle quality. And by Marco's, pizza lovers get it. 41,000 were in celebration mode about uh, 20 minutes ago. But Western Kentucky has rallied and is within eight points in this Conference USA championship game. Aaron Taylor, how have they done it? Boy, oh boy. Well, it didn't start out so good when he had Jared Stearns with the muff pump, but it really was Bailey Zappi finding some holes in a very soft and porous UTSA defense. And then it was the nice run by Robichaux and what he did, and then the two-point conversion by Jared Stearns going up and high-pointing and plucking the football, and well, oh well, Tyson Helton's team got themselves right back into this game. This season, 
the largest deficit overcome for a win 25 points. Biggest lead here was 29 points. Harris is going to fire this one out of bounds and it's incomplete. That stops the clock. Second down and 10. Big storyline in the second half of this game is the inefficiency to gain positive yards on first down, either running the ball or throwing the ball for UTSA. Is it as simple as just loading the box? Initially, and that's why I think going to the RPO game on first down would be a good change of pace. They're going to win this game. Harris is going to have to do it. McCormick in motion, low snap, and Harris keeps it. I don't know that he wanted to keep it initially, but that low snap meant he really couldn't hand it off to McCormick. The timing was not there. First, he had the errant throw on first down because of some miscommunication. But to your point, great job by Jawan Jones, the defensive end, being able to play both the end around and the quarterback keep there. Boy, a three and out would be ginormous. Ooh, huge. Third and nine. Roadrunners need that nine yards. Blitz comes. Everybody comes. Throw over the middle and open there for the catch is Cardenas. That was huge. Oh, there's an injured offensive lineman limping back to the line of scrimmage. You're going to bring people from depth. You go to where they vacate the space. Cardenas the perfect route against that blitz. And Harris put the ball on the money. Live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. And right there, that conversion happened because UTSA threw it where they weren't. Right tackle Makai Hart came out. Jalen Galmore replaces him. For the Roadrunners, not much there, just two yards to the 44. That was a huge, huge third down and nine conversion. No question. And remember how much success early on in the game UTSA was having on the perimeter? They've gotten away from that. A lot of their runs in the run game came from inside the tackles. They've stuck with that. I really think they need to try to get the ball back out on the perimeter where they were having success early on. McCormick has run for 178 yards, 28 carries, three touchdowns, 65 yard touchdown run. It's the longest run of the night. And McCormick's going nowhere fast. It's going to be another third down and nine. Immediate pressure over the right tackle. We saw that there was an injury. Boy, Darius Shep is just doing some great things in this ball game. He's actually over the guard right there. He's going to swim and just come across and do a great job. That penetration is the kryptonite to the run game, and 97 doing a great job picking up for the injured Jeremy Darvin. Maurice Crum brought everybody, it seemed, on that last third and nine. That's why Harris has to take advantage of that. This time they bail and play coverage. Harris is flushed and chased and fires. It's caught, but not enough for the first down. Ooh, now it is decision time. Is you would think? I mean, look, he went for it twice, deep in his own territory, the first time they met on fourth down. Being conservative is what's gotten them to this point. That's what's allowed Western Kentucky to get back in the game. I love the decision here for him to go for it. It's a championship, Rich. We talked about opportunity. We talked about a lifetime of memories. You're not going to win a championship by being conservative at this point in the game. Fourth and a long three. Harris all alone. Sets, fires, throws. Got him! First down! Zachary Franklin delivered on time and on target. This route is incredible that he runs here. A snag route or a jerk route. We saw Alabama run this for a two point conversion in their game in the Iron Bowl. And there, Franklin runs a beautiful route and Harris hits him. I think that that's going to be the recipe for the rest of the game. You have to give Frank Harris your quarterback opportunities to go win it for you. And now field goal range comes into play. No question. It's an eight point game now with a field goal. It becomes a two point game. Any points here from this point out matter. McCormick he's been slow wow. but not this time. That's nine more yards. And that's six of those yards he got by himself. He gets hit right near the line of scrimmage right there. One missed tackle, two missed tackle, three missed tackles.
And, and Rich, a, a story of this game is how Western has responded to stop the run. They've done a remarkable job in the second half, only 54 yards after going over for two huns in the first. 186 right now for McCormick. There's a first down to the 28. And this is what you want to do at this point in the game. This offensive line has been banged up. It's been a revolving door. We talked about how they made it seven plays into the season before they lost starter number one at the tackle. A couple series later, they lose their center. And from then on, it's been a hodgepodge mismatch. It's been that way here tonight. Yet here they are with an opportunity for the boys up front to take over and win their championship. In field goal range. That would make it a two score game. This is an end zone shot. And it's caught. That's a touchdown. That makes it a two score game. And that was huge. DeCorian Clark had three touchdowns in their first game. He doesn't secure that ball right away, but boy, does he get it on his way to the ground. That's tremendously difficult. He know he doesn't have it. The defender's arm is right in there, but he fights and wrestles it away for the score. Ten plays, 75 yards, almost five minutes off the clock. That may have been a championship drive. To Corey and Clark from Frank Harris, Road Runners. Forty-one thousand very loud Roadrunner fans. This kind of looks like the Riverwalk last night with the Christmas lights and the boats going through. Quite a scene for an 11 year old football program trying to win its first championship. And you get the sense that this is just the beginning. This program is going places. I mean, with this fan base that all of a sudden is just engaged with all the talent in Texas for college football. Short kick Moses. At his 15, cuts back. And into the 28 yard line. Are Ryan keys to the game revisited? Well, Western Kentucky offensively beat Chunk Tassik. They've been that 11 pass plays for 328 yards tonight. Defensively, they couldn't stop the run, though. And for the road runners, start fast, sustain drives, and score touchdowns. To me, that's been the difference in this game. And defensively, they've also stole a couple possessions. The miscues for Western Kentucky cost them severely. And you're hoping that the best quarterback and most productive one in the country can get you back in it. Zappi's in trouble, flushed, fires it out of bounds. The officials right now. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the pocket and the ball crossed the neutral zone. Second down. And he was waiting for that side judge to line it up like they do when a punt goes out of bounds before he made that determination. Clarence Hicks with the pressure again. Just an excellent job. He had a sack earlier. He's gotten close twice. And that gives them a chance. Defense wins that first down. But Bailey Zappi in this offense can score at will when they're humming. Poorly in motion. Pressure's on. Zappi's going down. Charles Wiley. Adrian Hicks over on this side. The pocket's going to collapse, but it's going to be Hicks over that right side that comes back in, folds inside off the tackle. That's really tough on the tackle, but the pressure's starting to mount. Look at this alignment here.
third down inside throw and that makes fourth down a little more manageable. Corley makes the catch. So instead of fourth down and 15, fourth and 11. Zappi needs yards. Flags down, free play, fires it, almost caught. It's incomplete, but the flag is sitting at the 27, and it's going to be offsides against UTSA. Critical penalty. Offside, defense, number two, in the neutral zone at the snout. Five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. Here he is right here. That's Charles Wiley. Oh, man, from that angle, it's hard to see that he was into that neutral zone. But the linesman was the one that threw the flag, and he's got a great look at it. Fourth and six. Roadrunners look like they're coming. And they are. Zappi throws off the back foot, and it's caught. Flag is down at the 45 near midfield. Another flag is down right in front of the Western Kentucky bench. That's a heck of a catch. This, I mean, this could be offensive pass interference, and maybe somebody reacted on that sideline. There's two flags. And, and by the looks of Tyson Helton, this looks like it's going against Western Kentucky. You got a championship on the line, Rich. You got to be at your best when your best is needed. And both of these teams need their best right now. They haven't been perfect. But I wonder if there's a little bit of defensive pass interference on that far sideline. That second flag came a good eight to ten seconds after the play. There are two fouls on the play one live ball and one dead ball personal foul face mask defense number twenty six that fifteen yard penalty will be added to the end of the run and it'll be a first down after the play was over unsportsmanlike conduct Number eight of the offense. Cool. That is number eight's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul towards disqualification. That 15 yard foul will also be enforced, but it'll be first down. <laughs> well, you were right first when you team. said you have to be at your best, and neither team was at their best on that. I mean, if you're Jareth Stearns, you've already had a muffed punt, and now you're going to get a costly penalty after taking advantage of UTSA that right there, Corey Mayfield hit the face mask. And he turns and he tries to flip him the ball, but that's right there. He had his hand on the face mask, but you saw Stearns get up after and try to flip the ball to the defender. But of course, the first down, the most important thing, low snap, Zappi, sideline, incomplete. Tough to find a man open. This pass rush for UTSA really starting to heat up and credit the secondary, Rich. Zappi had to pull that ball down. There was nowhere to go. That allows the defensive line to get pressure and to win their blocks. And that's what forced the errant throw. Western Kentucky has all three of their timeouts left. But they're down two scores. They need two touchdowns and a two-point conversion. Zappi caught Jareth Stearns. He's getting close to 500 yards in this game. 31 of 49. This is a defense that's had the. UTSA may have gotten a timeout before the snap. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Ball sits at midfield. Timeout. UTSA. That is their. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Inside college football. It's coming up after this one. Lots to talk about with this game. Pac 12 championship and set up championship Saturday across the landscape of 
college football. Brent Stover will lead the group in an orderly discussion with plenty of bells and whistles in the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Been in these situations, Bailey Zappi's telling his team, okay guys, here's what needs to happen. Give me time and we can win this game. Pass protection is going to be key. His receivers have been winning against this secondary, and it's a secondary without their leading tackler, Rashad Wisdom, who's been ejected. But take a look at Bailey Zappi, almost half a thousand yards and three touchdowns, and he's still got plenty of gas left in the tank. 55 touchdown passes this year. The all time record is 60. Joe Burrow. Zappi, quick throw, and it's on the money. It's a catch. And Corley, or rather Stearns, inside the 35, clock stops, they move the chains, and the up-tempo offense is clicking. Now they're moving at a lightning pace, and they have to, because time's not on their side. Zappi going to go, uh -oh. and it's incomplete, almost picked. Tinsley was the intended receiver. And Corey Mayfield, Jr., on the coverage. The 12th interception for this team would have been huge. Mayfield with the face mask has a chance to end the game right there if he can hold on to that football. Instead, Western Kentucky's looking at second and 10 from the 34 yard line and needs two scores. Four man rush. Zappi, head fake, end zone. Open touchdown, Jareth Stearns. Western Kentucky is not dead yet. Jareth Stearns is right here. Keep your eye on the safety. He's going to lull him to sleep. This guy comes up and then he's just going to scoot behind him. This is terrible safety play. What is he waiting on? I mean, he. Great move by Jared Stearns. Poor safety play, but it's almost like they're lulling those defensive backs to sleep. And good on Western Kentucky for scoring a much needed touchdown. Extra point up and good. They don't chase that extra point. They're still down eight. There's still four minutes left. And Western Kentucky still has three timeouts. 56 touchdown passes this year for Bailey Zappi. And this is still a ball game. What a year this young man has had. Bailey Zappi, the transfer from Houston Baptist. Four touchdowns tonight. And here's where he ranks all time most touchdown passes in a season. Now, Joe Burrow had 60 in 15 games. Colt Brennan, 58, 14 games. This is the 13th game for Bailey Zappi. He'll get one more, a bowl game. His offensive coordinator, Zach Kitley, those two together at Houston Baptist, and they're hoping to get one more chance. Fair catch called for and made, and we check in with Jenny Dell. Yeah, guys, Coach Helton knew that this one was going to be a battle, and when we talked to him this week, he said he had one goal, and that one goal was that they need to be in the game in the last five minutes. Well, you look at the clock, we're at 358, and they are certainly in this game, fellas. Absolutely. Great point, Jenny. Tyson Helton and the Hilltoppers were 1-4 and four when they lost that October 9th game to UTSA, and here are the two box scores, so to speak, from both games. How crazy is that? McCormick, they're going to have to corral him. And they do, but not before he picks up four yards. That was a nice game there on first down. Very notable is that Western Kentucky has three timeouts. UTSA only has one, so that gives the Hilltoppers some options with clock management. But the ball is in the hands of UTSA. The Roadrunners can win a championship on the field with their offense. It's going to be up to the Hilltoppers to get this football back, to put it in the hands of Bailey Zappi. But if you want to win a championship, you got to do it at the line of scrimmage. But at some point, Frank Harris is going to have to make a play to keep this drive going. And a little more attention to the play clock before the snap. It's down to two. 
McCormick tries the left side. Two more yards. Third down and a long four. Western smartly holding on to their timeouts. They've got plenty of time if they can get this stop here. And if they don't, they're going to need them on the fresh set of downs. McCormick closing in on 200 yards. He's at 194. I don't know if I'd like necessary just a regular called run. Maybe get Harris outside the pocket with some options. Oh, somebody jumped. Free play. Harris takes a shot down the sideline and it's incomplete. And that's a disaster for Western Kentucky. That is going to be a first down on the penalty if it is offside. Offside. Defense number two. In the neutral zone of the snap. That five yard penalty results in a first down. It's A.J. Brathwaite. And such a great playmaker on the outside. Had him up near the line of scrimmage. He's just right there. And he wasn't the only one that moved. There was a defensive lineman that went. He didn't enter the neutral zone. But now you got to start thinking about using your timeouts. That was a costly penalty. 226 left. UTSA is a touchdown, or excuse me, a first down away from ending this ball game. Western Kentucky needs some success here on first down. Spread him out to run it. McCormick straight ahead, and he's got a sizable gain, and he ain't stopping. Look at this push. They mark him back at the 44, but that's an eight yard carry, and I mean carry. We've seen the power from his legs all night long. Western burns their first time out smartly, but it makes this conversion, this ever so important conversion, all the more easy. Just great job blocking up front. That defensive front seven of Western, not knowing where the ball is at. Everybody's looking around, and number three, all he's doing is driving his legs. That's want to. That's how you win championships, Rich. Two fifteen left. It is a second and a long one. Sincere McCormick. Frank Harris is, is the guy that, that runs the show, but McCormick is such a valuable piece. Averages over 100 a game. Last two years, he's run for almost 3,000 yards. What's been. Tonight he's gone for 205. And what was amazing, Rich, and sorry to cut you off there, buddy, I, the fact that he had been held to under three, 100 yards in the last three games. He hadn't gotten 100 after having this incredible year that he's had. He had hit a slump. But tonight, when his team has needed him most, he has risen to the occasion. Just need a yard. Ooh, movement. And that's going to be... Jalen Galmore. Offense, number 70. Five yard penalty, still second down. Jalen Galmore playing for Makai Hart. Costly penalty. Now he's going to come off the field. They moved and stemmed. UTSA was motioning their tight ends from the left side to the right, and that got the defense to move. Galmore moved off the defensive line's movement. Boy, does that change things now? Yes, it does. Second down and six. Two more timeouts left for Western Kentucky. Harris is going to keep it, trying to get to the edge. And Harris has the first down and more. Flags down. Midfield flag. That might be a face mask. Western is indicating that they thought there was a penalty on UTSA. If so, it'll still be second down, but it's going to bring it way back. Holding offense number two, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. Joshua Cephas, we've been complimenting. Keep an eye right here. We've been talking about the job that the receivers are doing. I don't know how much of a hold. That was by Cephas. He did have that left arm in there across his body, and that may have been what did it. 
now that I've seen that at the end. But UTSA's receivers, we've been complimenting them all night about the great job they've been doing, but number two did too good of a job there on that last play. And now UTSA that had all the momentum has had penalties on back to back plays. This essentially brings it back to the original line of scrimmage and it's still second down. Got to execute in these moments both of these teams do your job don't panic be relaxed. Landmarks and now. Well the clock was restarted and so Western Kentucky has to use. Their second timeout. Timeout. WKU that is their second please reset the game clock to 205. Thank you. Old Trapper Beef Jerky player of the game. Sincerely. McCormick. Well it's been him all night Rich 34 carries they leaned on this young man all night long and boy did he deliver three touchdowns. 200 plus yards 34 carries. Big plays, but he's been magnificent, in my opinion. And the biggest difference has been in the short yardage or goal line situations. Second down and seven. You noted that early in the game, the yardage on the ground was coming outside the tackle box on the perimeter. And UTSA has turned to Sincere McCormick kind of between the tackles in the second half. And it's been working. The third quarter was dominated by Western Kentucky up front. Their front seven, Maurice Crum, their defensive coordinator, being aggressive and taking advantage of it. But it's almost like we went to a time warp because now we're second down and seven, basically the same line of scrimmage. McCormick bounces outside and he stopped. This is going to be a timeout. And a third down and about five. Well, that was a huge stop by Western Kentucky there. And now if they can get another one, Time they out. give themselves WKU. a chance. Great finish there by Demetrius Kane, the linebacker. We've seen McCormick bounce outside a couple times. Dominique Bradshaw was there as well. But Rich, there's no other way to say this. We started this game talking about with a championship being at stake this game comes down to this next play if UTSA can get a first down here it's game over and if Western Kentucky can stop them from getting five yards they give themselves a chance. You saw Bailey Zappi warming up He's thrown for five hundred and forty one yards and four touchdowns. And there's also a little caveat here too buddy. UTSA four down territory. We talked about Jeff Trailer being aggressive. You've got two opportunities, two plays to go five yards to earn your school's first championship. He did that in the win on October 9th three times. And he made it every time and won that game. Third down five. Interesting. Frank Harris under center here. McCormick strung out and dropped. They're not going to get it, and it's fourth down and about seven. Time will come off the clock as the play clock starts. So that means Western Kentucky's going to get the ball back with a minute. I don't like that play call. That was too tricky for them trying to manufacture some yards. They did have some success with those sort of plays earlier on in the game, but Western was ready for it this time. And now the Roadrunners are forced to put the football back into the hands of the most productive college football player we've seen at quarterback in 2021. Jareth Stearns is deep. Lucas Dean to punt. And he gets a gorgeous punt. Wow. Although it's wide and it's going to go out of bounds. Man, he got his leg into it, but he pushed it wide. They're going to mark it at the 22 yard line. He already has set a Conference USA championship game record with 541 yards. He's got four touchdowns. 
If anybody and any team was built for this, it's Western Kentucky. No timeouts. They need eight. You're UTSA, you got to get to the quarterback with pressure. And if you're Western Kentucky, you have to play clean. Catch the football, no sacks. Four man rush. Zappi fires, dive, no catch. Jareth Stearns, good coverage. Trevor Harmonson on that coverage. Because that was a short route, Rich, that's one of those situations where you're okay that Stearns dropped the football because it preserves time, which is much more precious than six yards is right now. Second out 10. Zappi shovel pass. Daywood Davis. That's not going to stop the clock. It's short of the first down. It's third down and about four. There's an injury. And it's UTSA who has the injury. Corey Mayfield went down hard, looked to be in tremendous pain right there after making that tackle, doing a great job of keeping Daywood Davis in bounds. Aaron, we've seen on, on these few plays here on this drive, short stuff. And short stuff is great. It's kind of what the offense is built on. There is an need. injury to a, the, a member of the defense with the clock running under a minute. That qualifies for a 10 second runoff. Western Kentucky has elected to go for the forego the 10 second runoff. So therefore the clock will start on the snap. Well, that makes sense. But they're going to need some chunks here rather than the, the five and seven yards. Sometimes as a play caller you set yourself up for the next play and what you want to have happen next really hard to see what happened to Mayfield there. But we just showed the touchdown right before this on the previous drive was them baiting the safety and now UTSA has three safeties deep. They want to keep everything inside and in front. This is where you have to get home as a pass rusher and you have to protect up front. Zappi steps to the pocket. He's hit and dropped and sacked. And he's got to get back up. The clock is going to run down and it's fourth down. Ball game right here. Clarence Hicks with the play of the game thus far. Zappi looking, throws. It's caught. That's Cofield. He's got the first down. They're still alive. Clock stops. Chains move. 22 seconds left. Are they going to run a play or are they going to clock it? The play will start on the windup after the first down. Clock's rolling. They're pushing it. Another throw dropped. Mitchell Tinsley at the 45. That would have been a first down. 14 seconds left. Any way you slice this up, Western Kentucky has about three plays left. We've seen drops all night long. Tinsley could have caught that one. It was a little bit outside his outstretched hands. But I think this allows them to catch their breath a little bit because that wasn't a very deep pass. Again, pass rushes at a premium, and you have to protect to let Bailey Zappi give you a chance to win it. He has good arm strength. Short throw. Cofield again. I don't know that he got the first down. It's close. He got it by inches. That this is where you clock. have to spike it. Or are they going to go? Or are they going to continue to push? Oh, there's a player down. Are they going to put time back on the clock? I guess is the, the next question. Wiley is down. Two defensive backs. Wiley injury the linebacker. Out. Please reset the game clock to seven seconds. And it's a break. They were not no. set to spike it. No, they weren't. He was not over centered, which is what you want. Uh, he just dropped. And, you know, maybe he's thinking that would slow him down. But I think that's a. I think that's a boost 
to Western Kentucky because it, it puts time back on the clock gives them a chance to set their offense and, and think about a play. It, it gives them a timeout. Now the clock will start on the whistle but it gives them a timeout in the sense where it's that they can talk about what their strategy is here. Well UTSA has got five inside the 20 to guard against a Hail Mary. I think you give yourself a quick game. UTSA calls the timeout. It's going to be difficult here Rich but if you're Western Kentucky with seven seconds it is possible to run two plays the first one has to be very quick you don't want to try to throw a Hail Mary because it's a low percentage pass but if you can pick up 15 or 20 quick yards and get yourself out of bounds now you can dial up your best plays to score a touchdown from the 20 to 25 yard line and we've seen them do that all night long. This isn't a layup for UTSA. They've got to play good defense and if Western Kentucky is strategic they're going to try to pick up half of this get out of bounds quickly if they're allowed to and then take a shot with no time left to get a touchdown. I think you absolutely have to get out of bounds. I don't know that if you're over the middle you can get up and there'd be enough time to spike it. Let's see. Zappy blitz comes Zappy escapes going to fire a wobbler that is incomplete one second when it landed. I think there's one second left. UTSA is all over the field right now. And the officials are trying to get them off of it. The previous play is under further video review to see if there's any time left on the clock. Please clear the playing field. Take a look. The clocks are there at the bottom of your screen. Pressure again. Zappy gets hit by his own player defensive lineman was engaged with an offensive lineman that offensive lineman hit Zappi as he was throwing the ball and that's why it died but there is clearly one second on the clock when that ball hit the ground Western Kentucky's going to get another shot at this thing and I think they already dumped the Gatorade on Jeff trailer who has to regroup put the headset back on clearly the ball was down after video review, there was one second left on the clock when the ball hit the ground for the incomplete pass. Please put one second on the clock, and the clock will start on the snap. It'll be second down. The first challenge is giving Zappi a clear path to get some momentum to get it to the end zone. This is it, Rich. Zappy. Five man rush. It's a blitz. Zappy's going to throw high towards the end zone. And it is intercepted. UTSA. Champions for the very first time in Conference USA. It was quite a ride for Bailey Zappi and Western Kentucky. But the Roadrunners, just an incredible race to 11 wins. They lost last week. They weren't really all that spunky this week. It was a tough week for them to get through what happened last week at North Texas. The man they came out here, built a big lead, and held on to the very end.
Rich, I don't know if this win happens for UTSA tonight without this incredible fan base. Crowd noise was a factor all night long. It gave them juice. And when it mattered most, Jamal Sam with the game ceiling interception and Jeff Trailer doused for the second time this evening, but this time it counted. UTSA was at its best when its best was needed, and they are champions as a result. That man's going to a bowl game. He's going to the senior bowl, and many think he'll get a shot at the next level. He's such a smart football player, Rich. He diagnoses things so well. He's like having a coach on the field. He reminds me a little bit of Kellen Moore in that respect. Doesn't have the strongest of arms, but maybe he's a guy that can get you through a game if your starter goes down and makes good decisions and can operate the offense taking limited snaps. He threw for 577, and those two mistakes at the start of the third quarter the muff punt and then Zappi's lone interception are actually his first interception. The game ended on his second. Those two mistakes. Western Kentucky is going to look back at that sequence and kick themselves. It was also the bad snap. The dropped touchdown. There were multiple opportunities in this game. Multiple drops throughout the game by various players. Any of those has the opportunity to alter the outcome of this game. But when you're playing championship football and there's a lifetime of memories at stake you have to find a way to make those plays forty one thousand were here tonight. I mean that's amazing. This place was absolutely electric but we felt it coming in listening to all the different music and it was everything from hip hop to mariachi music to country western music. These fans were out in mass and there was a special feeling walking into this building tonight that we saw unfold and that you guys are watching right now in the middle of your TV screens. UTSA champions for Aaron Taylor Jenny Dell our entire CBS crew I'm Rich Waltz. This is a presentation of CBS Sports Network 24 hour home of CBS Sports. We're back shortly here in San Antonio with the trophy ceremony. We'll take you back to New York for inside college football. Brent Stover used to not Kevin Carter Danny Cannell standing by. Welcome to Inside College Football presented by Trico Wiper Blades. Tremendous job, Rich, Aaron, Jenny. What a game. Rich said it throughout the game. First half, are you not entertained? I mean, what a way to kick off championship weekend across college football and here on CBS Sports Network. Valiant effort by Bailey Zappi and company. Oh. They come up short 49 to 41. Kevin. Gutsy performance by Bailey Zappi in this offense. 577 yards passing. Coached the two receivers that we highlighted before the game, Jared Stearns and Mitchell Tinsley. Each have over 170 yards in this game. Two touchdowns apiece. But at the end of the day, it came down to who controlled the line of scrimmage. I've been saying this all year. I say this all the time. In order to win at this time of the year, you have to control the line of scrimmage and run the football. Sincere McCormick. He did just that for you. Over guess. 200 yards. Coach? Coach Trailer, Barry Lunny, and staff, what a great job they've done. I want to go back to Larry Coker. 11 seasons ago, they're an 11-season old team, and he's done a great job of setting the foundation. But this staff, the way they put this thing together, what a run. Remember, they got beat by North Texas. Refocus, play a great team. You mentioned Bailey Zappi. There's a reason why he's going to the Senior Bowl, guys. He could throw the football. Yeah, a Jeff Trailer cut his teeth in the state of Texas in high school football, has built up this program from where Larry Coker started it. Now you see them having this historic win. What an amazing victory for them. And you heard the broadcast mention it all night long. How about the scene there for the home crowd supporting their home team? We could hear the, the crowd noise. It was impacting the pass rush. That's why they were able to get to Bailey Zappi. So what a performance for the Roadrunners. Phenomenal. Zappi 577, four touchdowns. He's now four away from tying Joe Burrow's single season touchdowns record from 2019. Five would give him the record all by himself, and he's got a bowl game to do that. We talked a lot about Zappi, but Frank Harris just so steady on the other side. You mentioned McCormick. I mean, really, both teams going up and down the field. Early on, it had such an interesting feel to it that we were just going to see a track meet going back and forth. 
By early in the third quarter, Coach, UTSA had built a huge lead, 41-13. You credit Western Kentucky for coming back, but then even more credit to the Roadrunners. In the end, they did exactly what they had to do. No question about it. And it goes back to what Kevin's been talking about, that physicality, that toughness. Sincere McCormick, we said the ball game's going to go through him. It did. That's 204 <laughs> yards of tough running, and he's the best five-yard carrier. Uh, a carry. He can he can make people miss one or two yards. He gets five yards. 49-41. Conference USA champs, the 12 and 1 Roadrunners of UTSA. Fresh 30-minute edition of Inside College Football with a wrap-up of this one, trophy presentation, highlights of the Pac-12 title game, and previews of everything to come tomorrow is next. What a scene inside the Alamo Dome. We send it back down to Texas. It's the trophy presentation and the announcement of the MVP of the Conference USA title game with Jenny Dell. Jenny, take it away. Thank you, Brent. All right. Thank you so much, Brent. We're here celebrating the 2021 Conference USA champions, UT. message. Please, please turn your attention to the video boards. Hello, I'm Tony Birdwell, Senior Vice President and Chief People Officer for Ryan. Unfortunately, I can't be with you on the field there today, but I do want to commend Coach Trailer and his UTSA Roadrunners on a tremendous 2021 Ryan Conference USA Championship game. In just a few moments, we're going to go down to the field for the trophy presentation. Again, congratulations to the student athletes, coaches, staff, and administrators, and of course, the Roadrunner fans all over the country. Congratulations again on a tremendous 2021 Ryan Conference USA win. All right, it is now my pleasure to introduce the commissioner of Conference USA, Judy McLeod. Judy, I think we have some hardware to give out. First up, we're going to go to the winning coach of the 2021 Conference USA Championship, Coach Jeff Trailer. All right, Coach, I know it's loud in here, but what a year, what a season it has been. When it's all said and done, what is the most important thing you can take away from this year? Uh, we did it for the city of San Antonio, right? That's what it's about. The 2 1 0, baby. The 2 1 0. It's about our kids. Uh, I've been with them two years now and their belief in our culture, the 2 1 0 triangle toughness culture. And uh, a lot of people took shots at us last week for triangle not showing up, but we know the triangle showed up tonight, big boy. You've had the best season of UTSA that has ever existed. Who do you thank for that? It's always the players. It's a players game. Coaches get way too much credit, way too much blame. It starts those single-digit guys, uh, zero through nine, especially our 2-1-0 guys. And our president and our athletic director and our boosters are extremely, extremely supportive, and they give us what we need to be successful. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank Congratulations. You. God bless. All right, it is now time to have a little chat with our MVP, Sincere McCormick. Judy, would you like to hand him the trophy? All right, Sincere, we all know that you would not be in this position without this entire team that's behind you. What does this MVP honor mean to you? First, I want to thank God. I want to thank my mom. I want to thank my coaches. I want to thank my boys. Hey, hey, this one's for San Antonio. Hey, this one's for San Antonio, though. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for every moment. We've been working hard, and I'm grateful for every moment with these, with these boys. When you look back on this 2021 season, what are you going to remember the most? This, this trophy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to remember this trophy, though. But I'm going to remember the times that we had, you know, the triangle moves, the, the hard work and dedication that we put in day in, day out. And, uh, you know, this, this, like I said, this one for the city. Let's hear it one more time for your 2021 Conference USA Champions, UTSA. What a season, fellas. All right, San Antonio, let's hear it one more time. You can get a little louder than that. Come on, San Antonio, let's go. Come on. This one for 2-1-0. 2-1-0. 
Two one zero. All right, guys, back to you in the studio. Congratulations to your champs. Jenny, well done. We said it. That is a heck of a scene, Danny. They're going to party long into the night there in San Antonio. There's no better feeling than celebrating at the end of a season. You put it to bed, you hold up the trophy, you know a ring is coming, and now you get to wait and sit and see what bowl you're going to. No better feeling than this. You know what? When you can go out and make a memory on a special day like this, both these teams have nothing to be ashamed of. They have everything to be proud of. They've had great years, but <clears throat> being able to hold that trophy up after this game as a champion really puts an accent and puts an exclamation mark and just in your, in your memory. I mean, when you have your look back, when you look back on this time in your life, it was the greatest time in your life for so many reasons for these UTSA Roadrunners. They'll have an extra special memory on this day. No question about it. What about the 41,000 fans that are there? Mm. The city of San Antonio, well, they've embraced this team, and y'all said it. There's nothing like this celebrated time. They'll never forget it because it's the best days of your life. These are the best days, the funnest times. There's nothing like winning. And now for coaches, get on the phone. Get on the phone. Let's start recruiting. Time to recruit. Go get number three again. I tell you what, it's going to be nice to recruit after a 12 and 1 season to this point with a bowl game to come. Most likely, not for sure, but most likely in two weeks, December 18th. The New Orleans Bowl, but uh, that is not for certain. But they're going to have a lot of fun and the opportunity to finish 13 and 1. Conference USA champs, the Roadrunners of Texas San Antonio. Full highlights of this game and plenty more to come. Championship weekend is underway. Stay with us.